a, de- a, a, a defense, oh, by the way, that has gotten better the second half of the season. Aaron Glenn is up for uh, several head coaching jobs. I, he didn't, hadn't gotten one yet. We'll see what happens in Washington. The kicker, I'll give you the kicker again. By the way, we have we have breaking news. We're going to break this okay. live. Uh, on today's Pardon My Take, we've got a twofer for the people. we got a good friend, Boog, Booger McFarland, talking about what it's like playing in a Super Bowl. Uh, talking about the playoffs, a little draft talk, great catching up with him. And then we have our good friend Stavros Halkias on, which I'm going to say right now is must listen because Stav, diehard Ravens fan, has basically been in a hole since Sunday, has not done any media, has not uh, talked to anyone. So we got basically his instant reactions after also, just so you know, he yelled very loud a couple times, so uh, he was yelling so loud that his his own AirPods couldn't handle it. It was great, though. It was got, muscleless. He got, like, pure, uh, uncut stav. Yeah. Like his genuine reaction. And just, it's a lot of rage. It's a lot of coping. But it's it's pleasant to listen to it, in real life. It's, a, it's exactly what, if the AWLs, when they love when one of our teams loses and you get to drink our tears, that's exactly what you get to do with Stav. Especially if you're a Chiefs fan, you're going to really love this yeah. one. Uh, we're going to talk about some new coaches. We have the 2023 bonk list. And then we're going to finish with Firefest. So we got a great show for everyone. It's brought to you by our friends at Farmer's Dog. This new year, the easiest healthy habit to start is one for your dog. The Farmer's Dog makes feeding real, healthy dog food easy and convenient, and your dog will absolutely love it. Stella and Blake are Farmer's Dogs. They love Farmer's Dogs. They eat it up so fast. I was, I was getting Stella Farmer's Dog before Farmer's Dog came on as an advertiser. So you know that... I, I stand behind this product. It's smart, healthy pet food. You can feel good about feeding your pup. That's why it's time to quit the kibble, kick the cans, and start fresh. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real meat and veggies to the safety standards of human food. It's the best option for dogs of all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real healthy food. The Farmer's Dog isn't just fresh, high, higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old, it's always the right time to begin investing in their health. That means more happy, healthy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash PMT plus you get free shipping. Just go to farmersdog.com slash PMT to get 50% off. That's the farmersdog.com slash PMT. So go right now. Take care of your best friend. Farmersdog.com slash PMT. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take. Today is Friday, February 2nd, and PFT has a new coach. All right. Dan Quinn, baby. So, he, so, was, he was number one on my big board, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Yeah. So we, we, you'll get your you'll get the actual like instant reaction because the news broke while we were interviewing Booger McFarlane, but PFT, you've now had a couple hours to process. Yeah. Um, a couple people in this room have been very mean to you. Yes. Well, there's only two other people in this very room. Very mean. Well, no, well, I would count the booth as well. Hank's been very mean to me. Max has been very mean to me. Memes is just always mean to me, so I don't I don't think that that has anything to do with the coach. Jake, of course, has been polite. Uh, but, yeah, Max and Hank are, are a bunch of haters. And Max, out of all the people in this room, Max should be ecstatic I about am. Dan Quinn. I am. Because, at the very least, the Cowboys' defense is going to get worse. Right? Yep, that's exactly what I was thinking. And so, if we get better... And the Cowboys' defense gets worse. I think that's a win-win for both me and you. It's a Quinn Quinn, Quinn Quinn all sure, around. Sure, um, that, that's good for me. Suck my dick, Max. I did see there was a release, a statement released Edition. after. Yep, put, put it on the bonk list. Coming up in a second, I saw an ad, uh, a statement that was released after the hiring. It reads, "Ha ha 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 ha." 
Can I guess who that's from? Yes. Uh, well, it's definitely not anyone who's in the crowd for Hank's stand-up act last <laughs> Oh, got him. Uh, I think it's Hank. I think that was actually the That was Hank. That was Hank. Henry Lockwood. He did uh, a lot of ha's. Mm -hmm. Maybe too many. You got, you got uh, not enough. I think <laughs> I that was that was I was trying to tweet what uh, I was feeling. Why are you Why are you so fired up about this? Because I fan. listened here and said you go Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson. I, I need Ben that. Johnson. You tweeted at him every day. Everything the Lions did, you're like, ooh, Ben Johnson. I never ooh, tweeted ben at Johnson. Ben Johnson. I'm all in on Ben Johnson. It's called X. Then you Freedom didn't get speech. Ben Johnson. He literally turned you down. Would have got more money to be a head coach and said, I don't want to uh, be coach for your shitty franchise. I want to win a Super Bowl and send you that there's zero chance that would ever even possibly happen in Washington. Meanwhile, he works for the the biggest loser franchise in NFL history, and he Man, still Hank's going off. doesn't want to work for Washington. NFC Championship game participant, and as we discussed, Dan Campbell got in his ear. Then up his heart. you were like, oh, well, I'm all in on Belichick. I want Belichick just to rub it in your face. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to go out of your way to say, I want Belichick just, just, to, get, just to rub it in your face. You brought me into a situation that I had no involvement in. Why are you looking at Big Cat? Look at me. And you didn't get him either. You got a, a coach who has been to a Super Bowl, so that's good. Oh, I, okay. So I have a coach. Lost. What happened in well, the Super Bowl? No, uh, they let, had a let me let me step, let me oh, step in. Here. That's a good coach. Yeah, so they're up let, let me step in here, and he okay? Because I believe this for is another my, Super Bowl. This is my hire. Uh, where they? I would lost like to address it. Uh, one year, uh, nine years ago today, 2014 Seahawks. Okay, yeah. so um, let's talk about Dan Quinn for a second because mm -hmm. he's an elite defensive coordinator. <laughs> we know that. So that's why that, that, uh, he that, should, that was a good laugh. He Funny. should be a three-time Super Bowl champion. He won one Super Bowl. He lost to Hank's Patriots not because of his defense, but because of not handing the ball to Marshawn Lynch on the two-yard line. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, obviously, again, against Hank, Hank's Patriots, he didn't lose that Super Bowl. Kyle Shanahan lost that Super Bowl. Super Bowl for well, the they Cowboys. were up. They were up 28-3. to three. And he was the head coach. He was the head coach. Um, so he should be a three-time Super Bowl champion. Just, just let me cope, okay? Can I cope? I just need like a, a day to cope, Hank. Wait, just looking back real quick because the Marshawn Lynch thing, he did his defense did give up 14 points in the fourth quarter in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's true. That might be that might be accurate. I'll have to go back and look at the box score. But you were at that game, Hank. Yeah, I was. Was it his call it. to hand the ball off, or I don't know. He okay. probably could have said over the headset. Don't do this. Sprint it out onto the field. Russell, you piece of shit, hand the ball off. Please don't do this. Uh, people are, you know, calling him a retread. Retreads run the world, okay? Retreads run. You say run... that in 2024? 20, Sorry, our treads mm -hmm. run the world, okay? Um, Actually, retreads. Yes. And here's the thing about retreads in the NFL Gary Kubiak, John Gruden, Bill Parcells, Tony Dungy, Tom Coughlin, Pete Carroll, Andy Reid, Mike Shanahan, Don Chula, Bill Belichick was a retread when he was hired by the New England Patriots. Uh, Dan Quinn. years old? Second stop. Second stop. He's going to figure it out. How old is he? He's physical. He's a physical man. I think he's did 53. You just, did you just put Gary Kubiak in the same? He's he made, 53. He got to Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he got to Super Bowl with the Broncos. Should have just gone Pete Carroll, I should Bill have, Belichick. I could narrow that down. John Gruden. Yeah, let yeah. Me narrow, <laughs> actually, let me narrow that Felt down. I like that was going against what you were saying. I, Everybody that I just mentioned on that list, except for Gary Kubiak, yeah, and now Dan Quinn. It's it, Godfather Two was better than the first one. That's a fact. Wayne's World Two was worse. Sorry, or, Iraq War. Trying to help you there. Iraq War Two. Yeah, World War Two kicked ass. It did. Yeah, it was really great. We I mean, were the winners. We fucking beat the fuck out of the Nazis. We did. Yeah, if it wasn't for us, the Germans be speaking Russian right now. Mm -hmm. Just think so. about that, Hank. You think about that. I've been. I listen. PFT, I'm supporting you. Dan Quinn rocks. Backwards hat rocks. Yep. Plays good defense. Football guy. Through and through. Leader of men. He is. And all his players I love him. NFC, champion. NFC champion. NFC champion. champion. All, all, all his players love him. Micah Parsons said, like, if he goes, maybe I'll go with him. Oh. So maybe we'll get Micah Parsons. I have a question. Yeah. Going into this search, what tier would you have put Dan Quinn at on your – Wish list. I don't think he would have mentioned his name. I, tier no, one. I, don't think. I think he actually said the yeah, other day, no, "Please I, don't have it be Dan Quinn." Well, I did. I don't. I don't recall saying that. There I mean, were so many names that were thrown out here on this show for the Commanders' next head coach, and I don't think one. Okay, of them well, was he, Dan Quinn. Here's another thing: we have a, a rookie GM, right? He he helped to assemble the San Francisco 49ers' entire roster. Now he's our general manager, rookie GM. I think you'd probably want uh, an experienced head coach. 
not a rookie head coach that doesn't know how this whole thing's run. Good thing there weren't any other experienced head coaches on mm-hmm. the market. Well, there yeah, weren't any. True. There weren't any that have been head coaches more recently. There weren't any and better at it. <laughs> all the ones that were on the market wanted control, won roster control. Do you so know that for a GM. fact? Uh, Rabel. Rabel's a control guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you confirm that. No, he's a, he's a control guy. I think he's a go with the flow guy. He's a players coach. Yeah, yeah. Well, that he the reason why he butted heads in Tennessee was because they tried to take control away. Pete Carroll got rid of all his good players. Pete Carroll wanted control. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't talk to Pete Carroll personally. Nick Saban wanted control. Uh, Nick Saban did want control. Yes. Okay. Okay. I talked to Nick. Okay. Well, PFT, you're defending Dan Quinn right now. We actually have a clip from the interview with Pete Prisco Ooh. where you maybe you weren't such a big oh, fan. Oh no! This is great. We got to probably play that. Yeah. I actually, Damn. we actually have it loaded. Oh, awesome. wow. So someone actually, they did the work here. And Quinn go back to Seattle. I, I think mean, probably, that, but, but you have yeah. to like, at least if you're the Seahawks, you have to have a little bit of concern after that playoff game. I know it's one game and you can't really judge that based, you know, on, on the body of evidence that he's done in Dallas, but it would make me think like, may, yeah, maybe we should interview a couple other guys. But here's my okay. problem though, with when That's we right. hire these head coaches. I stand now. by that. It was okay. a bad playoff game. Okay, but I think he. That wasn't a damning clip. He got a little bit of the Cowboys in him in that playoff game. Yeah, and you know you can look at what he's done in the last two seasons in Dallas. He's awesome. Dan Quinn's awesome. Hat backwards. Is there a part of you, Hank, that is lashing out like this because you just lost your defensive coordinator? Good question. Yeah, I don't know what the Cowboys are doing. Uh, (laughs) Oh, I know what they're doing. They're actually going to interview Ron Rivera. If I'm Jerry Jones, I'm finding a way to get Belichick, Vrabel, in. Uh, Pete Carroll on the same staff. Oh, you're like, trying. You're about sim- Saban. You're assembling the movie Old Dogs. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Adam awesome. Sandler should be on it as well. I don't know if he was in that movie, but it sounds like he could be. He probably liked it. Yeah, he probably was like, "Damn, I should have thought of this yeah. first." But yeah, they keeping Mike McCarthy is insane. What with, with all these other coaches just not coaching next year. Okay, so can I be he honest? He won't be the co- he won't be the coach by like October. Permission to be honest. Yes. Uh, Dan Please. Quinn was not in my first tier of, of desired coaches. There were some other names that have been thrown out there. What about tier two? Looking forward to. Uh, I, I didn't do a tier two. I just had a tier one. Uh, but if you were to retroactively he was number one look back. He, he was tier one of tier two. I, okay. I think there was a tier two. I think there might I think have been there a tier was, two. It was no, Ben Johnson one. tier one. and then Belichick. Slowick, no, I think tier two. it was Ben Johnson and Slowick were tier one. And I remember you saying was, Johnson or Slowick. Okay, well, no more. Tier two is Belichick, tier Vrabel. Two, Belichick, tier Vrabel. three was. Uh, we'll give you Dan Quinn in tier three. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give you tier three. All right, so tier he, four was Dan yeah. Quinn. He was tier one of tier two. That's where he was on my list. Uh, not a very exciting hire. I'll say that. Now, I'm, I did assemble a tier one. But you have to take into account the fact that I am very dumb. Mm. And I have some extremely bad football takes. Mm. So if you were me and you were running an NFL franchise, there's no confidence there. Like, I would be very, very bad at running an so NFL you, Oh, don't sell yourself short. Wait, so you might have been the reason why they hired Dan Quinn? I think he'd be great. No, I think they were no, listening no, to you I'm, and they're like, PFT wants Ben Johnson and I'm, Bobby Slowick listen, and Bill Belichick. We can't do that. Listen, if it were up to me, every single play would be like three downfield laterals followed by a 65-yard field goal. Right. So you should not ben listen. Ben Johnson probably could draw that up. You should not listen to my opinions when it comes to football. And I had the opinion that I wanted Ben Johnson. My opinion is probably incorrect. Got it. I did not want Dan Quinn in my first tier. Got it. So, therefore, it's like George Costanza when the reverse of everything he wants to do is right. Uh, I I think he's a good football coach. I think he's a leader in men. I think he's a great defensive coordinator. And I think he's going into a uh, stable addition of the Washington franchise, which we haven't seen in a very long time. Mm-hmm. And I have no choice but to just let's get a fucking Quinn surrection going on in D.C. Okay. Let's do it. So, he's going to coach up. Drake May or Jaden Daniels? We're going to get a good coordinator for that. Yeah. And we do have some good coordinator options. I heard a Kubiak's name being thrown around. And we know the history with the Kubiak yeah, coaches. they were on that list. They were fantastic. Great, great what blood about Ben line. Johnson? I, well, Ben Johnson could do it, yeah. I'd also just <laughs> – we get it. We discuss this with Booger when it happens. But in a way, now the graphic – I might have defeated the graphic. Mm. Where now it's Atlanta Falcons' former coaches on that one coaching staff – and you've got Dan Quinn, who's now a head coach, plus all those other guys that were in Washington that were also on Kyle's staff. Mm. So now it's like that Falcons team. Can you believe that team never won a Super Bowl? 
Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. I can't believe that. That was nuts. Mike McDonald was also above Dan Quinn on these. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. That. I forgot about he had Mike the dream. McDonald. True. He had the yeah, you tell. Yeah, 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 the dream. Because you do yeah. take credit when your dreams come <laughs> true. That's fair. So you gotta also take the opposite when they don't. This was a, it was a incorrect dream. Hand up, but that's not me. That's my dream. But when you dream is right. Yep, you my, get credit for I th- it. I think my dreams are three and one now. So. I was with you when you found out that Mike McDonald was going to the Seahawks. I don't think you were too happy about that. Yeah, it's whatever, <laughs> whatever. I just I stay tuned if you're watching the YouTube to see his face when he sees drop the news. It's great. I thought about that after the fact, and I'm I'm pretty sure I heard the news, and then I looked down, I took like a deep breath, and I was like, okay, I'm he back. was he was like Jerry I, Maguire I, when I, when they, when they show him getting married. And yeah. he has that face. He's like, I don't know if I want to do this. Or like an actor getting into character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that, guess what? That's my character. I just, I changed myself. I'm a Dan Quinn guy. I do think that it's going to, he's a solid hire. We've had him on the show, right? No, we've talked to him. Oh, that's right. We got to get him on the show now. Yeah. Maybe we'll get him on the show in the combine. Soupy? Friend of the program. Soupy. Yeah, we'll talk to him at the Super Bowl next no, like, year when he's in it. You're thinking Soupy. I'm not. I, it's too early to say soup. I don't want to put that pressure on Dan. Yeah, let's Quinn. not put that pressure on Dan. Let's Quinn. wait till they go. Like, what was it, like three and one? Yeah. And then and soupy. Yeah. It was. I think it was two and zero. Oh. Yeah. But if we'd gone three and one, the Bears. then it would be soupy. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I was that the perm bet. I am a fan. No, it was the tattoo bet. He's got it right there. I'm a fan of uh, of some bad bad teams. So just let me. Let me process this and figure out ways where I can convince myself that the future is going to be better. Just don't for, let Hank. Just but for listen, a bit. Hank's. Don't let Hank do this to you. Don't don't let don't let Max do this to you. Nick Sirianni sucks. He does suck. Gerard you, Mayo was a was like they just hired the guy who was just happened to be there and had Belichick's playbook. You wish you had a leader of men, Max. Yeah, we me. Me and PFT, we got great defensive coordinators as our head Big coach. Fangio. You know what? We have a Sometimes, great defensive player as our head coach. Old yeah. school football works. Yeah. Stop the run, yeah. run the football. Yeah. We have guys that are better suited for a different job as our head coaches. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I actually, we have with, great defensive with two coordinators. Rookie quarterbacks coming in. I actually think that if the Bears and, and the Commanders were in the playoffs this year, we could have done some damage. We're, damage. We're built for January. Damage. By the way, I saw Vic Fangio. There was a headline that Vic Fangio, it was like, Miami players were uh, got caught in like the Miami scene and weren't focused on football. And I read it so quickly, I thought it was Vic Fangio got caught in the Miami scene, and it <laughs> ruled for like those ten seconds that my brain couldn't catch up. I was like, imagine Vic Fangio, yeah, the hard out on South Beach, being like, that's why their defense fell apart. Maybe he got caught up in like the hardcore shuffleboard scene. Yeah, and they're like bingo halls. <laughs> so yeah, all right, listen, we're all in the up and up. Yeah, I basically got a three-time Super Bowl champion as my head coach, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. Uh, all right, what else before we do the bonk list? I did see – I'm actually – I'm going to change a take. I liked the NBA doing the MVP rules for, you know, you have to play 65 games. We're now finding out there might be some unintended consequence. Well, so there are some really good players out there that are – I guess they're injured or scared to play some games – and then they're not going to be eligible for the MVP at the end of the Correct. year. Correct. Right? So, well, Joel Embiid did get – he was out on Saturday. He was out on Monday. And this, then he tried to play on Wednesday and got re-injured. This is your guy's fault. And this is your so guy's fault. people are saying he was trying to play because he wants to reach the amount of games to get the MVP. Ooh. There might be some unintended consequences. But MVP is pretty important, right? Like, when you win the MVP, you usually win the NBA Finals. You guys aren't allowed to do this. I'm, not, I'm stopping this right now. You're not allowed oh. to do this. Who shows because this, you just the whole time against Jokic, you said he ducked because he wasn't hurt and he just didn't want to play Jokic. And now you're saying, oh, he should have never played. All right, so it's got to be one or the other. Sorry, it's got to be one or the other. Right. He might be right. <laughs> you see, Max did a Villanova podcast. <laughs> did he really? Yeah. All with Max. It's crazy. He squashed the beef with uh, Max. Well, me and Alan. Alan yeah. Ray, Nova legend. Shout out Rain and Threes. They're gonna be really pumped. Pump, pump, pump Was pump Alan up. Ray the guy who got his eye popped yes. out? Yeah. yeah, that's an all time. He called me a clown for saying that I wanted Kyle Neptune fired, and then. Fair. There was a big, <laughs> there was a beef, and then he asked me to come on a show. Love that. That's how the I like that. He understands how the podcast ecosystem works. Yeah, yeah. you just you're like you call someone a clown, and then you bring yeah. them on your show to refute the clown allegations. Yeah, now now we're friends. So yeah. you're no longer a clown. He's no longer a clown. Did, now, or, did, uh, yeah, we're, no, we're, now we're friends. Now, did you go? Did you go on the show and tuck your tail between your legs and be like, "Hey, Alan Ray, I just like to be friends with you because you're a legend," uh, or, uh, or were you like, "Why did you call me a clown? Did you hash that out?" I mean, you stand ten toes down. It, we hash it out, but I, I still said that I think Kyle Neptune should be fired. 
No, no, I definitely didn't do All that. All right, so then I know you weren't you weren't as heated as you. No, I wasn't heated. on business? No, I was a professional. I was, ta- Mac, I was just talking Nova Hoops. Mac, I did watch a clip, and Max, for anyone who ever like accuses Max of doing a shtick, he uh, told a very funny story that the day that Jay Wright uh, retired, Max was going on his third date with his current girlfriend, and he like met her at a, a restaurant and was like, listen... I just want to let you know I've had the worst day of my life and the vibes might be off for this date. <laughs> so that is who he is through it, and through. Yeah. And then I was talking to my girlfriend about it later. I, later that night ended. It was a, it was a Sixers playoff game. And then we went to a sports bar and Joel Embiid hit like a, it was the first round. So we hit like a, a shot to put it into overtime. And I was just at another table because there were Sixers fans. So I was just watching the game. See, at this is good. Table. This is how good relationships yeah. start. <laughs> you, you set the precedent. It's like if you're going to, if you're getting, if you love to golf and you like get a girlfriend, like make sure you golf a lot yep. so she knows what to expect. I was mm-hmm. also wearing a Sixers windbreaker to the date. Oh, she, nice. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> it was Classy. a Sixers playoff game. But yeah, she was like, oh, yeah, I remember that well. You were a lunatic. Well, they let that. They let, you can wear a Sixers windbreaker to a quiz <laughs> nose. That's no problem. It was some nice Korean barbecue place. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Max doing podcasts. Me was doing stand up. Pug sitting courtside or the yeah. Is going Hollywood. All the boys are going Hollywood. Pug was courtside of the uh, Seton Hall DePaul game, which I think they paid him to sit that close. It was a good look though. They were right behind the camera, ma- making some funny faces. That's just Pug. Yeah, good He's clean Pug. Just love Pug. Pug life. Uh, all right. Anything else in the sports world? We're obviously gearing up for the Super Bowl. Uh, by the way, Monday we have a. a very big guest, so get excited. Get very excited. We got some great Super Bowl content coming. Uh, anything else before we do bonk list? There was a Lewis uh, Hamilton. Oh yeah, Lewis oh yeah, Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton. Ferrari's back. Ferrari Dan's back. Yeah, Live and PGA merged. And then there's some other stuff going on too with them. I can't keep track of all. Of yeah. yeah, I mean it's not a done done deal. There's regulations. Yeah. and shit. Um, there there was a unfortunate picture of Patrick Mahomes that came out. And yeah, that he, was. He was fun. upset. He said they did him dirty. He was rocking the dad bod. He had a little, he had a little bit of a pouch. I think it's good if your quarterback's a little bit chunky, a little bit fat. You yeah. get it's natural padding. It absorbs some of the hits. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, these guys weren't in the best shape. It's all about pliability. Pliability, exactly. Did Lamar, you see that? Lamar Jackson should get fat. Did you see that clip, by the way, of talking about pliability? Someone did a clip of Patrick Mahomes' like off-season workouts, and he was doing the exact same like knee bends that he did in that sack, where it looked oh, like really? he was going to tear both his legs, and he like got out of it. It's all you know. You got to practice it. It's all pliability, baby. Yeah, pliability. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was a fucked up picture. But yeah, Lewis Hamilton in the Ferrari is going to be huge. Yeah, I really wish I hadn't gotten into F one because someone tweeted me they're like Ferrari likes to. Uh, bring on former champions so it can remind them that they once were champions, and that hurt my feelings. Even though I like, why am I a Ferrari fan? I can't remember. I think red it was just, car, the red car. It, it was, and it was cool to just wear the Ferrari. Yeah, the red car. It's people, the red car. People think that you own a Ferrari. No, it's the guy in Drive to Survive when he's like, when you ask a little kid to draw a car, what color is it? Red. Mm. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's fucking that rocks. I'm in. I'm a Ferrari guy. Lewis Listen, Hamilton. There's no sir, sir Lewis Hamilton. There's no sport that I like to pretend to be interested in. For like, I don't know, maybe uh, a second every week when it's in season. There's no sport more important in that category to me than F1. Yeah, I don't even think I'm at a second anymore. I'm like negative seconds. Negative seconds. Yeah, that's how fast I am off the start. Yeah, it's crazy. P1. Yeah, Caitlin Clark was was playing in uh, Evanston last night. We didn't go. Whoops. Tickets were very expensive. How expensive? Very expensive. Let me know Looking when Sabrina Ionescu is coming to come out again. Sabrina Ionescu. Uh, by the way, that, that's the other thing. Uh, we'll once football ends, we're going to be getting into basketball. Uh, we have a NBA preview. We're taping with Ryan Russillo during Super Bowl week, so that'll be great. I I watch college basketball every night. Chris Collins ejection ruled. I don't know if you guys saw it, but yeah. he got ejected and he like did the meme like I want to shake your hand, sir. Stopped and went and. Sh- and shook uh, Purdue's coach set. Why is his Matt name Painter. Matt Painter? He's a loser. Uh, shook his hand and Zach Eady and Zach Eady, and then, and then left. He pumped up the crowd. Yeah, I did a breakdown mm-hmm. on my Purdue is, by the way, so prime for classic Purdue. It's going to happen again. It's. I, I know that I shouldn't be saying this because the Badgers, I think, play them for the first time this weekend, but they're they're prime. Yeah, I th- I actually think Zach Eady just doesn't want to play basketball anymore. Yeah, he's just so tall. He's so tall. I've just been taking his over points and rebounds every game. 
He's big. He's and a he large man. General admission was 230 yesterday. Shit. We should have gone. 230? Yeah. 230 people? Dollars. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Of course, of course it was. Let's do, before we do the bonk list, uh, our friends from Top Golf are back. It's golf. It's not golf. It's Top Golf. If you've never heard of them, they have all the stuff to make them legit golf, like balls, clubs, turf, and even a ball picker upper cart thing. But they're very much not golf, too. We're talking loud music, giant targets, heated bays, and unbeatable food and drinks day or night. There are a lot of big sports moments coming up soon, especially in February and March. And if you're into football and college basketball, so if you want to catch the game as you play, Top Golf is the place. We love Top Golf. We've been many times. Uh, it is the best place for date night, night out with the boys. Come watch your games. You can just practice your swing as well. So since they want everyone to play, they just launched Half Off Golf Monday through Wednesday when you book in their app. All you have to do is book a Monday through Wednesday in their app, and you'll get half off the golf. Of course, even they have some rules. Half off golf Monday through Wednesday applies to gameplay only, isn't offered at every venue, and is only available when you book in their app. For full details on the offer, visit topgolf.com forward slash PMT. For a limited time, get half off golf every Monday through Wednesday when you download and book in their app. For full details, visit topgolf.com slash uh, forward slash PMT that top golf.com forward slash PMT. Okay. For people who are not aware, maybe new listeners, we're going to do the 2023 bonk list. This is every time that Hank has decided we have said something horny on the show and therefore got bonked. It's kind of a nice trip down memory lane of the past year. Yeah. And there's usually one or two things that Hank puts on this list that aren't horny, but Hank's and he interprets them as being horny. So it's the reverse which it, list. it will make Hank that actually goes on your list. Yeah. What are we going to put you down for this last month, Hank? Do like I this have entire to month on the bonk list? Maybe go well, down to Dallas? We're we're gonna get we're gonna we're weekend. gonna get into the origin story on this list. Oh no. Uh, okay. okay. I have not been making one for this year. I also, because the first year I did it in secret, that was kind of the whole mm -hmm. joke, and then I revealed it, and so I thought it might be jumping the shark, because sometimes you guys are aware, you're saying things, no, but make the bonk list. You got to understand. So I, I, I didn't, I wasn't as intensive this year. Okay, like, so you, probably that was a things nice I, way of just saying you just didn't yeah. do your job. No, I have, uh, well, shut the fuck up, I have all, of, I have I have them here. But you realize that, that, that was a classic Billy football. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> you realize that it's still in secret, because we can't remember what we said yesterday. All right, so I need to do one this year again. Yes. I have a partial There's, list. Okay, nice, you can, yeah. you can add to it, but there's no, you could what tell me. Mean, Jake? Like <laughs> it means that I think I was supposed to back you up, and I stopped after February. He's got a semi. So you have a two month list. Yeah, okay. I see. That, that's where I like. That's Billy. I'm. I'm but me. also, I was also <laughs> backing you up. Yeah. It sounds like you weren't. Yeah, you weren't. No, you're. You're. That's what you're doing right now is Billy, because you're blaming Jake for not doing a good enough job of doing your job for him. I did it. <laughs> I did my job. I didn't stop in February. Okay. But you also were because it was in secret, and you don't want to do it. So obvious, you stopped. No, I just didn't realize, like, again, the first bonk list was all me. You didn't task me the assignment. I was like, this is something I'm going to do because it'll be funny. I thought that the the shine wore off a little bit. No. And it wouldn't be Once as funny. Once a year? No. There's so, no, no shine wearing off. He yeah. did it one time to great com commercial and critical acclaim, and he's like, I don't want to. It might not be a too sell much doing it too. Yeah, I'm not a sellout. I don't want to yeah, be a sellout. You're sell like out. PVT. Jump the shark. One time only. Uh, Starting off hot, I don't know the context for this and i don't think this is true maybe it is i don't know the first entry 1622 is just billy fucked a milf at the airport on new year's eve oh i don't remember any of that Good me neither for him i'm not this is uh, allegedly i guess we'll throw allegedly in there okay yeah we'll throw allegedly there's in there. no context i don't know maybe backup backup boy i have i have that yeah <laughs> he got delayed at the airport that was the oh and we for probably it. It were like who'd fest. you fuck yeah, yeah yeah all right yeah that makes sense one six uh january 6th pft asked me if i had a squirter in my bed <laughs> okay uh january pft says major tutty needs a bigger ass that's he fact. does the, yep. the pig mascot is not he's not packing anything uh january 15th big cat calls daniel jones hot oh it's the jawline picture Okay. Remember that in the playoff game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They showed him, and it was like his jaw was so chiseled. He was hot. Uh, January PFT calls the neck concussion thing a cock ring for your neck. Yep. 
Yeah. This makes Wh- sense. Which I was blood up there. I was proven correct on that. Yeah. Same science. And I think you also told us that you put on a cock ring. Once. I, I yeah, I admitted to at one point <laughs> in my life I wore a cock ring during intercourse. Yes, it uh, wasn't for me. Congrats on the sex. Thanks. Uh, January still. PFT asked Julian Edelman if he's ever hung out with Jules, who works on Inside the NFL, just because they have the same name. Okay, who's Jules? I think a producer who works on Inside the NFL. Is that a public figure? Backup boy. I, I think I think Julian mentioned Jules. <laughs> I have. That's all I have. It was from the January 27th Julian Edelman interview. Oh. Wait, no, that might not be her. There's an NFL Jules. I that, think, that's a fair bonk. I think Julian Edelman brought her up several times, and then I, I as a journalist, I inquired. Got it. Okay. Uh, PFT says the first thing he would do as mayor of Cincinnati would check out the Nancy Regan files. First things first. Yep. Then the yep. Harambe tape. Throw True. Coat. True. Okay. Uh, 131. PFT makes up a fact about the Super Bowl having the most Johnsons in it. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's not really a bonk. Yeah, but I'm, I'm observing things. I wish I had more context for these, and I might have messed up the grammar who do, when I who should Who should be blamed for that? It's my fault. <laughs> this is exactly what I did the first year, so <laughs> shut the fuck up, because it's exactly what I did the first time, so there's no one to blame. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Jake brought a rosin bag And it was great because it made the holes tight And helped that they would never slip out Yeah, for the bowling punishment Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, That was a year ago yesterday yeah. On your birthday, PFT yeah. Thanks, Jake He didn't say happy birthday, he said on your birthday oh. So I thanks <laughs> No, no, I'm saying right then did Oh you yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah He said on your birthday uh, February now, Big Cat said A guy hit me up last night and I almost had to skull fuck him when was that? In regards to Pete Weber not playing in the U.S. Open. Oh yeah, there's a guy that called. Yeah, oh, the guy sure. at the, the. Oh US wait, no, we already player. talked to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. remember he. We tried I a think, few times. I think Pete yeah. Weber actually played in the qualifying this year, so I think he might be back. So skull fucking works. Yeah, so we did it. Uh, February second, Big Cat decided to have another kid. Yep. Yep. Bonk. Yep. Okay. Fair. Big Cat told Jake his mom was hot. If you're that hot, you have to have four kids. Mm. Yeah. Yep. You guys have done that a few times on yep. my time in the show. In our defense, she's hot. <laughs> I don't really know what you want us to say. <laughs> it comes up like every six months. Uh, and she swears. that She took my heart when she swore in front of me. She's like, I don't know why Jake doesn't fucking swear. And I was like, God damn it. Uh, February 5th, PFT, quote, It's bad to go all the way in. Sometimes just the tip is better. Talking about the Nets trade after Kyrie. Okay. Going all in. Yeah. Oh, I heard a crazy stat today. Did you see they did, by the way, uh, the they did a tribute video for KD. Yeah. They were, uh, uh, they, they, KD asked them not to. Not to, to and yeah. And he still did. But here, this is a, a crazy stat. Right now, the big three on the Suns, Beal, Booker, and KD, have played more games together than the big three I on believe the Nets it. ever did. Yeah, I believe it. Isn't that crazy? They never played. That's insane. Because remember, Kyrie missed an entire year, then James Harden got hurt, then he wanted yeah. to trade it. It's crazy. Okay. Uh, PFT asked J.J. Watt what his wife's at is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fair. Big Cat says to J.J. Watt, you can always just throw a nut in him to slow him down. Oh, that's about TJ. Talking about nut TJ Watt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does have a nut allergy. Uh, that's P- more of a bonk on you. I mean, you told the guy you can always throw a nut in him to <laughs> slow him down. But it's factual. I, I hear both sides of this. <laughs> uh, I want to fuck the AI chatbot. Which one of you said that? Mm. PFT had that for uh, micro. I was, I was asking them. Oh, I thought. Yeah. I thought you didn't have. It. I did. Oh. The Microsoft one. Ooh. Oh yeah. No. The the Microsoft AI chat bot ba- is a baddie. Yeah. She's cool. How about the girl on the train? You ever see that one? The movie? No. The AI. I read that book. Yeah. Oh okay. That's the only book. No I've one ever knows read. the train. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I read that tra- book. <laughs> Credit to Max. Read that book. There's like a picture of a girl on a train. She's so fucking hot. Oh yeah. Yeah, but she's yeah. AI. Yeah, it's right up my alley. Yeah. Uh, Mark Wait, Titus. Why? Thinks- why? Because you like women in transportation. I mean, we'll get into it. Uh, oh, okay. I got it. Mark Titus thinks it's a bonk when Big Cat said, "I have a box for you." That's on Mark. Mark's a horny motherfucker. That's one thing I've learned in the last six months working with him. The dude is rocked up all the time. Yeah, he walks around the office with an erection. <laughs> he says, sorry, excuse me, hot erection coming through. That's why nobody wants to guard him. That's why he's so good at basketball. Yeah. Smoking P- you with his boner. P- 
PFT makes up a pineapple trophy in college basketball. Okay, swingers. Uh, Big Cat says pineapple trophy. He would <laughs> fuck the CBI. The CBI yeah. has golden pineapple. Yeah, trophy. thank you, Jake. Learn ball, Hank. All right. Big Cat said he would fuck Sister Jean. Yeah, I would. PFT for says, the stories. PFT says he would fuck Princeton Stadium. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, I would too. It's a good looking that, that that basketball court is yes. so sick. Jake says he loves sitters when talking about basketball wedgies. Oh, yeah, sitters are awesome. Yeah, they are. That first okay. tournament was magical. Yeah. Uh, Big Cat says Mrs. K would look great in sweaters, comma sweater puppies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, PFT calls Russell. What? Whoa. PFT calls Russell Westbrook. A good-looking guy. He is. He is a good-looking guy. Yeah, yeah, that's just guys supporting guys. PFT says, Casey Anthony, hate to watch her go, but love to watch her leave. Mm. Facts. Yep. 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 Bumper. PFT says Not he guilty. loves fucking our cheesesteak fries. Yep. yep. PFT, PFT says he wants to watch John Madden and Dolly Parton fuck. In heaven. As king and queen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's not in heaven. Yeah, she's not in heaven, but yes. Don't correct. kill her. Don't kill her. Uh, Please don't die Take it back. She should be queen, though. She should be yeah. queen of America. Yeah. Billy thought Tiana, Tiana Taylor was Tiana Trump. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Martha Stewart is the definition of baddie. Big cat. I want to suck a fart out of her ass and spit it in <laughs> PFT's mouth. She's so hot. Yeah, I don't she, care. What is she, like 80? Yeah. She's great And she's looking. done hard time. Yeah. My mom loves Martha Stewart. So do I. There's a picture like in my house. It's it's all family pictures, and then me and Martha Stewart when we did her for the court. Yeah, it's like so. I didn't realize how big of a fan she was. She's hot as fuck. Uh, who's back of the week? Breasts. PFT commenter. Okay. Mm-hmm. PFT wants to see Ricky stick his throat down Allison Stoke after the Ryder Cup. Okay. Yeah, because he didn't get that kiss after the Ryder Cup in in that old picture. So yeah. I, I would like to see him have a redemption story. Big Cat thinks Lane Kiffin's super hot. He is. He's he, lost a lot of weight. He's gotten hot. He got hot again. He's always yep. got a tan. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know. Something about Lane Kiffin just does it for me. Yeah, he's, he has definitely worked himself back into shape. Remember when when I said that when he came on last time and I was like, you look good. You look like you've lost weight. And he's like, that's a weird thing to say to another guy. <laughs> I think he kind of liked it. He's playing hard to get. No one's ever talked to him like that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more where that came from, Lane. Uh, this is August. Big Cat tweeted out a video and the caption was slaply going next level. It was literally just a video of asses getting slapped <laughs> in, okay. in slow motion. Yep. Yeah. I know that video. It's awesome. Uh, Big Cat said Jackie's ass was out, and she has a dunk on the day of JFK's assassination. She was. Mm-hmm. She does. She's got a fucking dumper. She knew what she was wearing. Yeah. September- How do you think she got that fucking rich Greek guy to marry her? Yeah. She, September 8th. She had that, that old dude, Zapruder. She was like, "Hey, just make sure to film me when we're going down the highway because yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got it all hanging out." Like yeah, thirst trap. If my, hu- if my husband's brains get blown out, just make sure you get that ass yeah. shot. Hey, hey, John, you know there's going to be some cameras out on the parade route today. Let's let's uh, pull the top down on the yeah. convertible. Do you actually can see that she has her uh, the the heel move that girls do to show their ass? She had her heel up. Let's play. Guess who tweeted this? Okay. Every time I'm in an airport, I've got my head on a swivel to see if Tiffany Gomez is there too. I think that was that would me. Be PFT. I think that was me. That would be yeah. PFT. Interesting. Yeah. A lot of tweets to Tiffany Gomez. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this, tiff. Trying to get She's her on tiff. the show. Yeah. She's Tiff. She sent me a very nice birthday text, by the way. That's nice. Very nice. Uh, I just wrote down Lo- Lauren Bobert. Oh yeah, the video. Yeah. Oh my god, that was the hottest. It video was so ever. good. I actually, yeah. want to watch it again. It was. She it was, was getting felt up. Yeah. It was. She was vaping. And people were getting upset at her because yeah, there was maybe some little kids around, but hot is hot. And it was a first date. She's freaky like that. Yeah, and then she when she was walking out, she was making sure to pass by the security cameras. Yeah. Dumping them out a little bit. She, she's she's hot. She's hot as fuck. Big Cat says he would watch Tyreek Hill in a porno. Would. Big Cat says he needs to see a penis and vagina in order to believe Travis and Taylor. That doesn't sound like that. I don't remember that. I don't remember that, that at all. You're sick for making that up. Can we make Taylor. a clip of that and just cut out my part, the Big Cat part? Do we, say it again. Big Cat says he needs to see P and V in order to believe that Travis and Taylor are real. I don't remember any of that. So did I? Did I? Did I say I need to? Yeah. So then so that's what, what you got to. That's the quote. Big Cat. I'm just reading what I wrote. Oh yeah, but what I what the quote is? The quote Big that Cat I wrote said to quote my I notes. To. It says Big Cat says he needs to see. No, no, no. P&V you say that I order. need to. 
That's what you said. No, but you should. It's a quote. It's I. I said I need to. You did say so that. So you should right. say the quote. No, you said it. But say the qu- full quote, which is, "I need to see P and V with Taylor and and Travis." All right, that's the quote. Okay. End quote. Wait, I, but Big Cat said it. I <laughs> right, Big Cat says he needs to see P and V in order to believe Travis and Taylor. Uh, PFT challenges Miley to a private debate. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. Don't know the context for she this just one. Stop talking to me. Uh. PFT thinks it's hot. Bride's dress got ripped. Hmm. Who is that from? October. Okay. Uh, PFT says he's going to get in his sister Jean's box. Okay. Uh-huh. Yep. And then my last entry, which was Thanksgiving, was Big Cat says Dolly Parton still has it. Oh, yeah. She still does. That's just respect. Oh, was that that was at her performance on Thanksgiving? So we haven't said anything bad in the last two months, Hank. At all. Yeah. I, I mailed it in December. <laughs> No, no, this is interesting because I just found this clip from part of my Take the Podcast, and that looks like Hank right there. Okay. I believe. And I need to see P and V in order to believe Taylor and Travis are real. Oh, Hank. Hank. Why would you say that about Taylor? I was quoting Big Cat. That's, that's extremely misogynistic mm-hmm. of you. Well, how so? Because you just said it in a way that made me think that you're horny for wanting to see your vagina, when she does not consent to that. I didn't say vagina. I got one. Uh, Hank said that Midway and O'Hare are four hours apart so that he could stay an extra day at Tiffany Gomez's house. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I have a few more. It was during it was during football. Oh, okay. Uh, January 3rd, Hank imagining Big Cat giving head to a hose. Maybe because you're talking about, like, hose water? Okay. Okay. <laughs> PFT called George Kittle's 100-year-old grandma good-looking. Okay, respect. She, she is. Respect. Yeah, for sure. Good genes. And then lastly, Hank likes the K. Adams show. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. yeah you watch this every episode. <laughs> Gaslight Central. No, 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 no. We had no, entire no. dinner I at the Combine. When you were second. Of, you you walked us through the entire rundown of the all K. Adams, of K. Adams, show. K. Adams show. That's a fact. Oh, man. The gaslighting's crazy. No, but you did. You said that. You're like, K. Adams? Oh, we should get her on. I love her show. I watch it every day. Okay. If you, yeah, sure. You don't think he said that? I know I didn't say that. Remember when Stu made the video of him being the suitcase? Yeah, that that video. That was last year at the Super Bowl, yeah, that right? Was last that, year's Super Bowl. All time video. Yeah. Her trying to close her suitcase. Yeah, she's yeah. lovely. The show's great. I just don't watch it every day, but maybe I'll So start. you watch it most days? I see clips on Twitter occasionally. Okay. The algorithm gets that for you. Yeah. You watch one, keep going. That was a good bonk list, Hank. Yeah. Thank you. Until yeah. the last two months, yeah. So are you starting this year's? I will now. Okay, maybe with context. You want to start off? I no, book, I, no. I, shut the f- no. I book. No, I book. I'll marks, do. You make your own bonk list, buddy. I I'm, I bookmarked the Sydney Sweeney. You put that on there. You want to listen to it again? I'm not familiar with the clip, so I should. Why, why don't hear you it. make a bonk list? I think the people like the Hank bonk list, though. It's crazy that you can't do just a little bit of work. I did the whole fucking thing. Wait. wait. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Can I see the video? Oh my god. She's with our friend Sean Evans on Hot Ones. Oh my god. Let's see. Uh, Oh, some people have unbookmarked, so we're down to 28,000 bookmarks. (laughs) (laughs) Hank and I got in a little bookmark battle today about the Dan Quinn situation. Yep. The ha 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 ha. I've never bookmarked a tweet, but I bookmarked Hank's ha 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 ha, and I can't wait to rub it in your face, Hank. But he's good. I bookmarked him bookmarking me, and I can't wait to. And then I bookmarked that back. Bookmarks. And then we got we started doing screenshots of the bookmarks to bookmark more things. You're gonna owe me bookmark 20, battle. I love you're it. You're gonna owe me twenty thousand dollars if the Patriots don't make a Super Bowl. Yep, that's that was one of the dumbest bets ever. I, I in the moment I was like, "Don't do this, Hank." I think I was drunk. No, no it was, it was week. after it was. Gri- oh, I know it was exactly where I was we were. Vlogging. We were in an Ohio hotel. Uh, eating pizza eating in the lobby. Eating pizza in the lobby, yep. and you were you were just feeling yourself. Uh, well, he was very very hungry that day because he hadn't basically gotten to eat at all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep you from eating. Max actually manus the manus because we were landing in Vegas like in the afternoon, and Max was like, "Should we eat before or after we record the show?" And I, I ate this. No, is, but I could feel that like Hank was no Hank was kind of looking at me like. Don't you stop me from eating, me, an adult oh, that can oh. totally get my own food. You're going to fucking make me not eat dinner. 
You act like you're not the 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 mom of the show that's running the show. Like, you, but you, you can you eat. You make the agenda. You're like, all right, this is the day to day schedule. Nowhere was there breakfast. It's fine. We, everyone, <laughs> everyone knows. Everyone knows how how it goes. I just wanted to know when we could record the show. I know, but I saw it the cor- out of the corner of my eye. Hank was like, <laughs> Wait a "They're not going to let me eat dinner again. You can eat at any time you want." All right, we'll keep that in mind. Let's okay. See, see when when that. Turns well, no, you. Off. I mean, there's. There's times when we're working that you could eat before we work. All right, you so could plan it. Changing. You could pl- you could eat whenever we're not scheduled for stuff. I Usually think when we we're to together start- as a band of brothers on the road, we do everything together. That's how I like to operate with my you you know, you're become a little bit more of a diva, you do everything on your own. What? And and it's like you don't want to eat with What do people. I do on my own? You don't want to you eat on your own. You don't want to eat with the people. I don't even think we- I ate breakfast that morning. We should start packing snack bags for Hank. Yeah. It's like granola bars, peanuts, uh yes. Yeah, it's a great bonding experience. The I the only the only diva thing I do is that when you guys want to go to the bar I'm like I have one night where I can f- go to sleep and I say I'm gonna go to my room and go to sleep. That's like the opposite of diva. And you're like, no, I want I want you to be here so you can tell me when to eat. I'm basically your dominatrix. You, you walk in, host this table for six and one, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the back room. Oh uh, well, Hank, I'll you know what I'm gonna make sure that you eat all Vegas. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to be stuffing you with food. Actually, Hank should just eat at the Wynn Buffet every meal. Yeah. That should that should be what you have to do. Just do that. Just schedule it out. You're getting three hours a day to eat. Great. All right. Perfect. Uh, okay. Speaking of, let's get to our interviews with Booger and Stav. And it's brought to you by our friends at Jeff. America eats over a billion wings during the big game. And with every serving comes celery that 86% of people don't want. Jif Peanut Butter is changing that by delivering Jif to your door in 60 minutes or less. Everyone needs to do their part to save the celery during the big game by including Jif Peanut Butter in their game day spreads. Their go to their two go cups are perfect for the big game. Celery neglect stops with you an irresistible Jif Peanut Butter. Why, why are you throwing it? All right, I got it all over my fingers, mm. but I love Jif, so it's fine. Get your free jar of Jif on. 211 February 11th while supplies last or you can act now and order everything you need to save the celery during the big game go to save the celery.com to get Jif delivered to your door for the big game I'm gonna take a bite celery and peanut or peanut butter on celery you hear that Rocks. crunch it's amazing. yeah that was kind of like cool ASMR that was there. ASMR yeah. that's how good Jif is so go right now save the celery.com to get Jif delivered to your door for the big game the best peanut butter out there Get that celery, peanut butter. So good. Save the celery.com to get Jif delivered to your door for the big game. Okay, here he is, Booger McFarland. Okay, we now welcome on one of our uh, favorite guests, very good friend of the show. It is Booger McFarland. We figured we hadn't talked to him in a while. We're getting close to the end of football season, and we don't talk to you for a few months, so we wanted to have you on, talk some ball talk some what's going on in Boog's life uh so thanks for joining us Boog how's it going let's I mean just straight up like the end of football season how you feeling because I, I know we mentally are tired but we also hate that football is about to end yeah what's up fellas I'm glad everybody's doing well yeah I feel the same way man I mean if you think about it it's a grind all football season and we look forward to the grind uh, but at a certain point the grind kind of wears on you like man I can't wait till this travel ends I can't wait till I stop getting on and off a plane having to sit there and talk about the same old topics over and over and over. And then once you get down to one last game left, you're like, man, what the hell am I going to do with my life for the next four or five months? So uh, it's bittersweet. I enjoy uh, doing this. I know you guys enjoy doing what you guys do. Uh, But it's always kind of uh, sad when we get to the point where there's only one football game left. Yeah. 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 You get down to the last game, and I, I do. I agree with you at the end of the season and maybe to a certain extent at the start of the playoffs, it's the same topics over and over again. Dallas Cowboys right. losing, is Dak the guy, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but then you get to that one last game, and you're like, I really want to squeeze every drop of football juice mm-hmm. out of this one game. So I'm going to get way too detailed in my analysis of the Chiefs and the 49ers. Yeah, w- way too detailed. But before we go any further, let's stop. I feel I, I feel like I would be doing a disservice if I didn't say happy birthday to my guy. Um, I, I was and and hopefully I got this right. I was looking on social media that you celebrated a birthday recently, PFT. I did. Yeah, oh, wow. it was it was yesterday. Thank you, Booger. That's very nice of Fucked you. Fucked up. 
Well, I just, I just want to say happy birthday. I didn't get a chance to say mm-hmm. it yesterday. I was going to text you, but I knew we would be talking this morning. Happy birthday. Uh, what, how old are we? 40, what, 45, 50? I'm, what? I'm 39. Yeah, I'm too. 39. I, I appreciate that. Because I'm so wise, you think I'm older. But actually, no, I'm, I'm just a spry 39-year-old. Yeah, I'm actually older than PFT. Well, first of all, he looks older. You just look fatter. Okay. That's kind of the way I look at it. <laughs> I was just getting even meaner and meaner. Booger, do you know, is there anybody else that you'd like to wish a happy birthday to? Um, not really. Who else? Okay. All right. It was Big Cat's birthday on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, it was your birthday. Listen, I'm a day older. I'm a day older than PFT. I actually, you know what, Booger? I don't care because men shouldn't know each other's birthdays. That's a fact. This is, this is true. Men, the only person's birthday you should know, uh, family members, kids, and your wife, like anybody else. Like if, if you, if you know your best friend's birthday or your homeboy's birthday, to me, that's a little weird because even though we're best friends, like we're not going to exchange gifts. I'm not going to call you. Right. Be like, hey, bro, happy birthday. Right. Let's go hang out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's right. Kind of sus. You I, just I, need one. You need what it really is, is is male friendship is you need one guy in your group who knows everyone's birthday. So then they send the text being like, happy birthday, this go. person. And then you're like, oh, yeah, happy birthday. And I never have to learn a birthday. But yeah, it was and my birthday this- Tuesday. Whatever. It's not it, you. You don't like me anyway. But thank you, Booger. Well, I really, that was really nice of you. Um, first of all, you're welcome. Second of all, I do like you. I only tease you about your weight and about your ability to control your donor cravings because I do like you. And at some point, 20 years from now, mm-hmm. when we're done with all this stuff we're doing, I want us to be able to sit back, drink some Stella Blue coffee, and reminisce about the good old days <laughs> when I when I ribbed you to death. Yeah, so you'll be able to do that. You'll sit. You'll be sitting at my grave site, and you'll be able to talk to me, and it'll be fine. Well, have fun. You bring some donuts to my grave when I die at like 55. Dead. You're not going to be dead at 55, big guy. Trust <laughs> me. It is true, though. Like, guys guys shouldn't know. It's not Friendship is not about knowing each other's birthdays. It's about knowing what to make fun of the other guy for. Yeah. That's how we say that we love you. It, it's really when it comes to, like, I, I don't know if you have this, Booger, but, like, I'll go, like, I, I'm done with the bachelor parties, but, like, I'll go on a guy's trip. And at the end of the guy's trip, I'll actually sit my friends down and I'll just ask them like three or four questions that I can bring back to my wife because I know she's going to be like, what's going on with this person? What's going on with this person? Because when you're hanging out, you're not talking about that stuff. You're not like, hey, Dude, well, how's your day-to-day life? It's amazing the amount of questions my wife asked me. Like, well, well, why do you do that? Like, I don't know. I never asked him. Yeah, like, right. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's no, going no, on no. with this? I don't know. what. I don't even know what my friends do for a living. I don't care. <laughs> Like, I, I know they're happy. They'll tell me if there's a problem. Like, if they ever need me, I'm there for them. But other than that, like, we just, you know, talk about the game. Hang out. Exactly. Talk about the game. What do you want to order? What are we going to eat? <laughs> yes. Hey, how much of it are we going to eat? And and when are we going to do it again? That's it. Oh, yeah. that's, yeah, the, the, the eating part is like, like, like family vacations. It's like if you didn't have the meals, like you would, you can't go on a family vacation because you got to be like, all right, what are we going to do for lunch? All right, where are we going to eat dinner? Okay, day's over. I mean, that's it. That's pretty much the highlight of the day, buddy. Uh, all right. I like this. Adult male friendship is uh, it is funny, the, the quirks that we all have, that we all share, and we don't realize until we say it out loud. Uh, Booger, I wanted to start. Was, we're going to talk a little Super Bowl, but I wanted yeah. to uh, start with something you're hot on on Twitter. Uh, I saw this yesterday. So Jeff Halfley uh, gets hired by the Green Bay Packers as defensive coordinator. Gets hired away from Boston College, which he had been doing a pretty good job there. And you pointed out that this is going to start happening left and right when it comes to college sports because it's so hard to recruit, to re-recruit, transfer portal, NIL, that we're going to start losing a lot of good coaches from college for what's kind of a step down in terms of coordinator position. What's the fix? Because you're right. I think think this is going to be a trend. Yeah, you know what? I I don't know what the fix is. I I can throw out a bunch of ideas. I, I, I think college football needs a CBA to kind of govern this because it's clear that the federal government is not going to step in because the laws differ from state to state. So I don't think the federal government is going to step in. That's number one. Number two, I I, I think there needs to be a one-time transfer period. Right now you got a a fall transfer portal period. You got a spring transfer portal period. Like as soon as the season's over, think about after you've come out of your worst meeting or or you come out of your worst event, if somebody asks you a question about the person you met with, like you'd be like, man, he sucks. But if you had a couple months to cool off, you'd be like, you know what? He was probably trying to tell me something that I really needed to hear, but I didn't want to hear because we don't want to hear bad news. And that's what happens to these kids after the season when you can transfer in December. Like if they didn't play well or they didn't get as much playing time and the coach said, hey, it's going to be competition. Prime example. Let's look at the Ohio State quarterback, Kyle McCord. 11-1, and 
you lost to Michigan. And from what I heard, he went into Ryan Day's office and he wanted to be guaranteed the starting job the next year. Well, the, the starting job wasn't guaranteed. So him and his dad took their ball and they left and they ran. Well, guess what? If he couldn't transfer until the spring, do you think Kyle McCord would have come back, maybe worked on some of his short shortcomings, maybe gotten a little better? And then in the spring, if you go through spring practice and you still want to transfer, okay, I can deal with that. But some of the emotional transfers that happen mm -hmm. in December, I think will be cut out. Uh, other things you could do, I'm all for guys making money. But name, image, and likeness was put in place just for that. What, what it's turned into now is free agency. I got guys calling me saying, yeah, we're in negotiations with Florida State right now. And if negotiations don't go well, we're going to the portal. What? Right. Negotiations? Right. Like, that's where we are right now. And I love college football, guys. I know there's nothing that we love more than sitting up on a Saturday morning, prepping, getting ready for college football. It's different than the NFL. Even though there's much more money involved in the National Football League, how much do we enjoy college football and the reasons we enjoy it? I just don't want to lose that. And I feel like we're trending toward losing our Saturdays. Because yeah. I don't want Saturday, I don't want Saturdays to be like Sundays. Like there's a difference between Saturday and Sunday, and I want to keep that the same. I agree. Yep. I wholeheartedly agree. Absolutely. And and you're right. I think that college football was broken for a very long time in terms of the money that was going to the schools, to the organizations, to the conferences. And then the players weren't getting anything, despite the fact that they were the product and they were putting all the labor into it. And now it seems like the lack of any rules whatsoever is making it so it's it's much harder to enjoy the sport, enjoy the identity of the team that you thought that you you used to be so like deeply emotionally involved in. And I don't know what it is like with the CBA. I don't know who's going to put that in place. Like, do you think the NCAA is going to step up and do that? Because it seems to me the NCAA, their mindset right now is like, we don't know what's happening and we're afraid of doing anything because we're just going to get sued by the schools if we do something that they don't like. The NCAA is useless. It's like me talking to Big Cat about a diet. Like, it's, it's just <laughs> useless. Like, it, I'm serious. Like, think about this. They, they will pick and choose what they want to investigate. They will pick and choose when they want to rule. Like, they're still ruling on things from, like, 2021. Like, we're, headed, we're in 2024 now. So what good is, is, is the quote unquote good old boy network, which is a bunch of guys in an old antiquated system where they ran college sports? Well, guess what? The only thing they really run right now is March Madness. Other than that, the power five in football is running college football. Greg Sankey is the most powerful person in college football, the commissioner of the SEC. So if we want to deem a czar or a commissioner of college football, I'm going to nominate Greg Sankey because whatever the SEC does, and I know the Big Ten is, is kind of making some moves. I would put the SEC in the Big Ten, but since Greg Sankey has kind of been the forefront, whatever Greg wants to do, I think everybody else will follow. So let's nominate him and make him the czar of the commission of college football and just go ahead and, and, and stop stop playing like, like it's the quote-unquote NCAA. No, it's the Power Five or the Big Two or Three or Four, depending on what the ACC does in Florida State and Clemson. And just separate from the rest of those, have a have a quote unquote invitational and determine a champion that way, because that's ultimately where we're headed right now. If we're acting like the NCAA is actually governing the power five, then we're fooling ourselves. Yeah, and I agree with you. And I also think that, like, why why isn't there? I, I know we've we've tried to make it the, the 12 team playoff. We're going to get some more group of five uh, teams involved. But to me, it's like, OK. We have the power five. We know there's going to always be a gap, like Alabama playing Cincinnati. Cincinnati was a great story that year. You play that game 100 times, Alabama wins probably 99, 100 times. Right. Why not have the group of five play for a championship as well? Because guess what? That's like That will still mean something, and the kids want to play for a championship, and that's still – like you could do a separate – like why, why not? Why, why not have two different playoffs? Well, I think you could have that, but don't you think UCF and Danny White would kind of feel a little, you know? Yeah, that's fine, probably, but they would still get to play for a national title. It, it would be a little bit different, but I would, I think people would, I, I think people would be in on it. So, okay, people might be in on it. So, if if we did this, let's play this hypothetical out. Does UCF have to turn in their championship they won a few years ago, or or can they roll that forward? They can, they can repeat it. They, yeah, they can keep it. Okay. Yeah, they can keep that one. And you can definitely claim a national championship if you win the group of five. Teams, yeah, by all means. Oh, okay, yeah. I got you. I got you. Okay. And kids get to play playoff football that means something to be like this is the best group of five team. And it's you know, it it's just kind of weird to me that like, 
I understand it. We want everyone to be involved, but like, let's actually make it so that so that the group of five is playing for something that's meaningful instead of playing for a playoff seed to get killed by you know an Alabama or an LSU or like. And it's again, it's not not saying they're not good teams and they're not like really good football players, but there is a point where it's like there's a there's a there's a levels here, you know. Yes, and you have yes, to just admit agree. it, you know. So I don't yeah, know, but, that, that's, that's but they don't want to do that though because again, we live in a society where we want to be. And, and I'm all for exclusivity. I'm all for making everybody a part of things. But at some point, you have to ask yourself, how many times if, if you put Tulane in this year, you put SMU, uh, uh, Liberty. Like, Liberty played Oregon this year. Yeah. And everybody knew the moment the game kicked off, Liberty had no shot. But because Liberty got a spot at the table based on the rules that were writ written, Liberty played Oregon in a, in a, in a New Year's Six game. And they had no shot, shot was whatsoever. And, and to me, I agree with you. Why not put Liberty in a situation and reward them for a good season, right? In a bowl, in a bowl game that they actually can win because they had no shot of beating Oregon that day. Yeah, we kind of treat it like college basketball. We're like, oh well, upsets happen in college basketball. That's a lot <laughs> different when it's when it's five on five and a guy can get hot or a team can shoot bad in a one game situation. And it's not like, hey, these this offensive line is three hundred and twenty pounds and this defensive line is two hundred and sixty. Like Oregon I, was so just, much bigger, so so much bigger than Liberty. It was right. insane. Right. Uh, all right. Other thing that I want to talk about, and I don't want to do too long on it because it has been a few days and we've, we've talked about it ad nauseum. We defend Dan Campbell. You don't. Yeah, I don't. And here's why. Um, Dan Campbell has made his name based on his style of coaching and the culture that he has built. We're going to go far more than anybody else. We're going to bite knees, elbows. We're going to be tougher. We're going to be more physical. And that's great. I understand that. But at some point, you have to take into account time, situation, and the game you're in. You just can't have a blanket formula saying we're always going to go for it. Now, the one at the end of the half, uh, okay, cool. You want to kick the field goal? I love that. Kick the field goal, you go up 17 points. At some point, though, when the score is 24 to 10, and it's you're halfway through the third quarter. So let's just start doing the math. I know you're probably not good at math. So I, I, oh, I, I got math this. for you. I got math for okay. you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So it's 2014. It's about seven minutes left. If you kick that field goal and you go up 27 to 10, how many more possessions do you think the 49ers are going to get? Four? Maybe four? So they got to score on three of their four possessions, two of them being touchdowns, to tie you. Okay? So during the simple math, if you kick that field goal, then you give yourself a high probability of winning the game. Now, that's number one. I thought that was a clear mistake. When it's 27-24 and you're down three, there's such a thing that, that's called momentum. And it, it, it's a mindset. Think about it. Prime example, PFT. Watch this. This is just for you. If you and I are on a Peloton ride, this is be insult, and there's yeah. – No, it's not going to be an insult. This is actually going to be something that, I, that he and I okay. can relate. Great. It's actually it's, – it's going to be relatability, something that you and I can't relate to a lot. Uh, if you and I are, are on a Peloton ride uh – -huh. And the, and the score is tied, and there's three minutes left on the ride, you're going to feel really good about, okay, I got a chance. If you're an hour on a ride, and you're down 50 on a Peloton ride, and there's three minutes left, you're going to be like, damn, I got a tough hill to climb. It's the mindset of being tied as opposed to the mindset of being down. And I thought at 27-24, you kick the field goal, you, you become tied. Now you've stopped all the momentum in the second half of the 49ers, and your team's mindset is in a different spot. And so, yeah, I disagree with Dan Campbell on two of the three uh, situations where he if, went for it on fourth if, down. If we were tied, I would assume that you fell off your bike. That's really the only way that would ever happen. But uh, you said something there I want to I drill down on. You said you, uh, you make a field goal, and now you're up three scores. We're not talking about make a field goal. We're talking about kick a field goal. Yeah. And the Correct. Lions kicker isn't great. I have some stats for you. You want the stats? You want the math? Yeah. Yes, let's do the math. Come okay, on. so I went through it. Michael Badgley career, 45 yes. to 49 yards. So this isn't yes. including over 50 because that obviously skews it. It was going to be a 45-yarder or 46-yard. 45 to 49 yards in his career yes. is 65%. The Detroit oh, okay. Lions on fourth and three or less this season is 85%. Okay. So I that part is like they didn't trust their kicker. You can blame them for having a kicker they don't trust, but they didn't trust their kicker. That's the big issue. 
Well, okay, then, then that leads to a bigger problem. Why is why is he your kicker? Then? That's I agree okay. with you there. I completely agree with you there. You go in the playoffs with a kicker that you don't trust. You're gonna be yeah. you're gonna be playing with a hand behind your back. But like, given the circumstances and how they feel about their kicker and how they feel about their offense, I also like just to just to bring it down to just like a, a very simple level. Do you not believe like Dan Campbell doesn't trust his defense, doesn't trust his kicker, trusts his offense? Don't you want the 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 part of your team, the third of your team that you have the most trust on, make making the plays in the big moments? Like that's what if, he wants. If we put it in a vacuum and just say that, yes, I agree with you. But we all know that football is three phases: offense, defense, and special teams. And again, it leads to it leads to a bigger conversation. If if you don't trust your defense, the defense. Oh, by the way, that dominated the first half. Okay, yeah. against San Francisco, but a they, defense. Yeah. Oh, Okay. A, de- uh, a, a defense, oh, by the way, that has gotten better the second half of the season. Aaron Glenn is up for uh, several head coaching jobs. I, he didn't, hadn't gotten one yet. We'll see what happens in Washington. The kicker, I'll give you the kicker again. But if he – 65% to me, I just think there's a big enough difference in three score. Okay. All right, since we want to do math, let's say he goes for it. And let's say he makes it. What's the probability – that if he makes it, they're going to score a touchdown. So you may wind up kicking a field goal again. Yeah, but so a shorter point. one that he can hit. By the way, yeah. we have we have breaking news. We're going to break this okay. live. Uh, Dan Quinn has been named the next head coach for the Washington Commanders. Let's go. That just happened. Left hand up. Half just backwards. Happened? Yep. Just Dan happened, just happened right now. Booger, I'm going to say right now, I love this hire. It's a great hire. Dan Why? Quinn, great, <laughs> great coach. <laughs> It's a great because it's a great hire. Uh, his players love him. This is instant reaction from everyone in okay, the room. Okay, instant reaction. All right, yeah. here, here's the thing about Dan Quinn. People forget he got to a Super Bowl and he put together a team. He had his quarterback. His quarterback was an MVP. They dominated the NFC South. He got to a Super People Bowl and forget lost it. He was up 25 in a Super. Bowl. He was up 25 in a Super Bowl. <laughs> That's Listen, big. if you have if you put together a team where your quarterback is the MVP, you dominate the NFC South, you get to a Super Bowl. I think that's going to make you a pretty good head coach. You'd sign I up for being up twenty five in a Super I Bowl. I can't right think now. of any recent examples of head coaches for the Washington Commanders that have that same resume. Uh, but I am I have no choice but to support Dan Quinn. And you do hear his you hear his players talk about him. His players love him, and it's also an added bonus of making the Cowboys worse. So we're making just them to, worse. Yeah. Just, just to tie the two together, if I gave you a choice right now, going forward, Dan Campbell or Dan Quinn, which Dan one Quinn. are you taking? Dan Quinn. That's, easy. That's, easy are choice. You, are yeah, you no, serious? He's just, he's, no, it's an easy choice. Booger, Dan Quinn. Are gotta you go, serious? He's got to go all in, Booger. He yeah. just found out. He turned his hat backwards. He's got to go all in. Let him go all in. This is about. Yeah. This is actually adult <laughs> friendship right here. This is male friendship. <laughs> Booger. I know, my, I know my guy right now is hurting, but you got to yes. just support him and be like, you know what? Okay. Fuck okay. It. We're I'm going backwards too. We're quinning. Yeah, and, we're quinning right now. It's quinning time. It. And Booger, okay. you just said Hold a second. On. You just yeah, do do the hat. Yeah, get the hat. Get yeah. the hat backwards. It's the new way all the kids Let's are doing. Let's go. We're we're quinning. There we go. Quinning. Let's the go. boys Dan are quinning. We got to we got to support Dan our Quinn. boys, even Let's if they're go. making no a question. mistake. No, we're not making a mistake yeah. though. But if I were, I would appreciate the support. Uh, I, you just said yourself, Dan Campbell goes for it on fourth downs. He's a bird brain. Yeah, I don't want that. I want Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is he got to a Super Bowl. Okay, so. I'm gonna support you, so let's spin this glass half full. Yep. Uh, if, if number one, I'm I'm surprising. Uh, I'm surprised that they went with another defensive coach. You fire Ron Rivera, uh, who's a defensive guy. You go to Dan Quinn, who's also a defensive guy. It tells me that they're gonna put a premium on how physical they want to be and mm-hmm. how they want to play defense in Washington. That's that's number one. Dan Quinn is a big energy guy. Like he's a big positivity guy. When I call Monday Night Football, I had some meetings, some production meetings with him. He is so fun to talk to, so full of energy. He's going to create a positive atmosphere, which is something that they haven't had in Washington in a long time based on the uh, old ownership and based on some of the things that were coming in that building. That's number two. The third thing is they got a lot of capital uh, from, a, from a draft standpoint. They're going to have a high pick. Uh, you got to figure out what you're going to do at the quarterback position. Are you going to be a big believer in Sam Howell? Uh, are you going to move on from Sam Howell and, and draft one of these guys uh, that are going to be in, in the 2024 draft? So, so many questions. I do like the hire because the last thing I'll say about it is this, is that too many times we hire the guy who can babysit the quarterback. Oh, I love you have to hire an offensive mm-hmm. guy to help C.J. Shroud. No, you don't. 
Okay, D'Amico Ryan, C.J. Stroud, it's great. Uh, you get a good offensive coordinator, and the Houston Texans are in great shape right now. So I love that you go out and you hire the best leader of men. I need somebody that can stand in front of the room and say, hey, guys, we suck. Here's how we're going to get better. And I think Dan Quinn can do that. And to your point about being down 20, uh, being, what was up he 25. down? He was up 25. He was up 25. He, he, he was up 25, which is probably not something to brag about. And he lost. I think his ability to understand a second time around, I wasn't successful, okay, the first time. Now, a second time around, I get another opportunity. Notice we got a couple of retreads. Him and Raheem Morris mm -hmm. are retreads in the NFL. Also, Jim Harbaugh, even though Harbaugh – I don't think – did Harbaugh get fired or did he just leave uh, San Francisco the first time? I can't remember. Either way, those three guys are getting a second go-around in the National Football League. Yeah, three guys that got to a Super Bowl, right? Or well, I guess Raheem Morris was on that Falcon staff at the time. Correct, yes. Yeah, and this is also exactly. – now I'm thinking about it, this is also good for me because that, that stupid graphic that you guys always show with all the former Washington head coaches and how great <laughs> they're doing right now, those guys were also – they were all on the Falcons team. And Dan Quinn was their coach on that Falcons team. So now it's more like we need to talk about all the former Falcons head coaches that are now elsewhere yeah. in the league. Yeah, but that, but that's not sexy, though. It's Nobody not, wants to talk about it. It's not Nobody sexy. Wants to talk about that. What, about, what about the fact of hiring a defensive guy to run the show? Uh, and you can say this about Seattle, too, with McDonald. You hire a Correct. defensive guy to run the show. You have to nail the offensive coordinator, especially if you have a young quarterback, right? And then, well, you do, yeah. And then you see, you saw this year; it didn't really happen. But you had, um, you had Ben Johnson in, D in Detroit. You had Bobby Slowick in Houston, two up and coming uh, offense coordinators that got interest to be hired somewhere else as a head coach. In those cases, they decided to go back and stick around. But I think more often than not, if you have a good young coordinator, they're going to get poached somewhere else to be a head coach. So then you have to just keep trying to find new offensive guys. Like, is there any advantage to having a defensive head coach? running the entire show as opposed to an offensive guy like Andy Reid that you know is going to stick around for a while? Well, I think defensive guys usually structure practice and structure um, things a little bit differently. Usually most offensive coaches, they can never have enough practice time because they all, they want to run every offensive play they can. Having played for John Gruden and then playing for, playing for Tony Dungy, I can tell you the difference is really this. John wanted to practice until they got every offensive play right. Tony Dungy just wanted to practice to be up tempo and to be physical. It doesn't. It didn't matter who won practice, whether the offense won or the defense won. Offensive guys hate when they get their ass kicked every day, and so like that's the difference. Let me ask you this about Ben Johnson: mm -hmm. Were you were you guys surprised since we're talking about offensive coordinators and who Dan Quinn is going to hire? Were you surprised that Ben Johnson a uh, went back to Detroit and b? Rumors are he had a salary demand somewhere in the ten to fifteen million dollar range, and that scared teams off. Were you surprised that those that those two things either leaked or happened? I I'm surprised that he uh, that he went back. Yes, because it felt like it was a foregone conclusion this entire season that he was going to leave. You saw the Detroit offense this year, and they were incredible. They were almost they were almost impossible to stop. The only thing that could stop him was Josh Reynolds dropping a couple easy catches on like short fourth downs. Um, so I was shocked that he went back, but I, I do think Dan Campbell kind of gave him a pep talk, and you know how Dan can get. He basically you know, opened up his heart and was built, like, we built this thing in Detroit, see it through to the finish, and I think Ben Johnson had that in the back of his head, and he was like, you know what, I'm going to do that, and then also I'm going to stick around so that next year I can coach the Bears. You know, somebody asked me, like do you that. think he's do you think he's quote-unquote scared to run his own program? And, and I'll never say a man is scared because – but this is two years in a row, mm -hmm. two years in a row that he's basically said, I don't want a job. And he said, I got unfinished business. Like how many times can he do that in your opinion? Well, being I think next year, I think if he does it again next year, it's going to be weird. People are going to be like, well, now something's weird. And I, I, yeah, exactly. Yes. yes I, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. And I think that being a head coach sometimes isn't, it's not for everybody. So you can be a great, you yeah, can like be a Dan great Quinn is a great defensive coordinator, great. not a great head coach. Got to Super Bowl though. <laughs> <laughs> and this is his, and this is the second time, and he's learned from his mistakes. I'm really looking you're forward to that. Yourself into that one, but sometimes oh, he just, we're he talking just about into it. we're talking about there offensive are guys side that are of the ball. Better coordinators than coaches. Yeah. Offensive side of the ball. Who's okay. your Who's your head coach, Big Cat? Is he a good? Was he a good coordinator? Listen. My head coach is we're going to trust Ryan Poles and we're going to see how Caleb Williams does. Do you think Caleb Williams is a slam dunk number one pick? Like, I know there's we're now in that smokescreen period. 
yes, where everyone yeah. will break down these guys and find yeah. everything that's wrong about them, and you'll get everyone being like, well, what about this? What about that? Sometimes you just got to watch watch the games and be like, trust it and be like, yeah, he's got elite skills that, yeah, there's some holes, but yeah, you got to take the shot. Yes, I, I think if you're the Bears, because where Caleb Williams is, I think his ceiling is so much higher than Justin Fields. Justin Fields it can develop into a really, really good quarterback. He can even develop into an MVP type quarterback because of his athletic ability. But Caleb Williams has enough of Mahomesy stuff in him that uh, you got to invest in that. Caleb Williams as a passer coming into the National Football League is further along than Justin Fields um, has been the first couple years in the National Football League already. So uh, hopefully, they draft Caleb Williams. Somebody offers them maybe a two and a four for Justin Fields. You get those picks. You can recoup some stuff. And you can start to build Chicago that way. That's what I would do. Yep. Um, and on top of that, there's so many more advantages. You, you reset the rookie clock. Yep. Um, you know, you can start to kind of develop. Um, you know, you get him a number one wide receiver to go along with uh, DJ Moore. Oh, by the way, DJ is a number one. Yep. I think you get another. You get another guy at some point. Now you got a couple of good uh, receivers, very similar to how Joe Burrow has in Cincinnati. When you got T. Higgins, uh, Boyd, and Chase, even though I think they're going to lose Higgins, but you still need to surround your quarterback with two or three really good receivers. And so, if I'm Chicago, that's the path that I go down. I like it. All right, so I want to talk about the Super Bowl real quick. You obviously uh, have played in a Super Bowl. Uh, two Super Bowls, right? Yeah. You, yeah. Won, you won two Super Bowls. You played in two Super Bowls. Before the game, from a mental, just personal aspect, mm -hmm. what point of the week do you start to get nervous? And what point of the week are you like, yes, it's it's another game, but no, it's not another game. A hundred plus million people are watching, and this is this defines legacies. It, it, it was the night before. Um, and, you know, all week long, the hype, the build up, like everybody wants to be a part of that. And, it, and it's something that um, is totally cool because the entire sports world is focused on you and your team. And like you're having so much fun, especially when you get to the city and all the work is pretty much done. And now it's time to take the team photo. It's time for media night. Like it's time for so many different things. But the night before the game is different. I'll never forget down in uh, being down in Miami uh, when, when we played the Bears. Um, I woke up at like 3 a.m. Sunday morning. And now the game is not until, what, 6, 5, 30, 6, whatever the time it kicked off. Um, and I tried to go back to sleep. I couldn't. I tossed and turned. And we were in Fort Lauderdale, so we didn't stay in Miami. And I literally went out on the balcony. And it's 3.30 in the morning. And I'm just staring out, thinking of the possibilities that could happen, the possibilities uh, or the outcomes that could play out that day. I'm thinking about making plays. I'm thinking about doing different. Like, I'm thinking about all oh, everything you can think of out on that balcony. And before I know it, it's 6 a.m. And at 6 a.m., the day, it's a long, long day. I mean, a long day. The nervous energy started to build as the night went on into the morning. And as we get to the stadium, and it's, it's like overcast and cloudy. If you remember Super Bowl 41, that it rained all game. Prince did purple rain at halftime in the mm -hmm. rain. That's awesome. Unbelievable. Yep. Um, That's all I remember. But I, no question. Kickoff. I'm kick in pre off in the in exactly. That's it. I'm in pregame. What? Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sexy Rexy Grossman. No yeah, question. Yeah. Well, um, he, you know, the, it was raining. And then, <laughs> it was raining, okay, Booger. Okay. He, he it was raining. Clear in '95. <laughs> Big guy. The, the rain had nothing to do with Rex Grossman. Okay. Um, the most cool moment though was sitting in in, in stretch in pregame. And you know there's probably 45 minutes to go before game time. And you're sitting there and everybody's walking around taking pictures. And you, I could just start to take it all in. And it was one of those cool, surreal moments because I dreamed of it for a long time, man, like being in that spot. And, you know, I got hurt in the game uh, in the Buccaneers year that we ran to the Super Bowl. So I didn't actually get a chance to quote unquote play. Uh, and so for me to be in that Super Bowl 41 in Miami, strapped up, ready to go on the field, it's one of those surreal moments, man. And the nervous energy doesn't go away until the ball is kicked off and until you get hit in the mouth. And I had some great battles in my career with Olin Krutz when I was in Tampa. And wouldn't you know it, here we are in the Super Bowl. It's me and Olin Krutz. And it was one of those three-hour movies, man, where um, I, I, 
I didn't want to be anywhere else. Right. Because and, 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 it, and it wasn't because I knew we were going to win. It was because I knew something special was happening in that moment. Uh, he and I, I mean, he and I are good friends and he and I battled for years. We're doing this on the biggest stage. And after the game for him to come up and say, hey, man, congrats. Much respect. Like that part of the whole deal culminating with the victory. Like it, it's just one of those moments. But to go back to your original question, man, you get super, super nervous the day of the game, the night before the game. And I didn't sleep again until like Tuesday morning. I mean, it was, it was like the longest 48 hours and the most fun 48 hours of my life. Okay, so another question about it. Uh, obviously, it's a little different because Peyton Manning, at that point of his career, it was like Peyton Manning can't win a Super Bowl, like chokes in the big moment, even though he was uh, you know, already on the path to a Hall of Fame quarterback. Patrick Mahomes has won a couple Super Bowls. But what is the vibe like when you have a guy like Peyton Manning or Patrick Mahomes in terms of the locker room? Is it we don't want to let this guy down or is it we got our ace in the hole like we know we're okay because of this quarterback? You feel super confident. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like when you walk out on the field and, and your kids are playing and you look over on the other sideline and the kids that they're playing in basketball are like a foot shorter Yep. and, 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 and they don't have their shoes tied. You're like, yeah. We got this in the day. It's going to be a good day for little Johnny. Like, that's how we feel with Peyton Manning. That's how you got to feel with Patrick Mahomes. Now, obviously, it's not to that level because we're playing pro football, but there's an, there's a level of confidence that you have when you have one of the all-time greats. It, it, because, you, yeah. because you know you know that your guy can get it done at any time. And, 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 like, correct me if I'm wrong, but playing with confidence is a huge factor that we don't really – we don't understand if we're watching on TV, but I would imagine, like – a locker room, a unit, playing with that confidence can make you a significantly better player on the field. No doubt about it. Confidence, momentum. It's kind of like, again, back to Dan Campbell. I got more confidence when I'm tired or up than when I'm down. Like, so yeah, confidence is, 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 is confidence is something, man, that, that you can't fake. Like you either have it or you don't. Like I can tell you on the first snap of the game, whether or not I might have a good game. Because I can understand that my opponent and what I'm dealing with. And so even though, even though uh Devin Hester took the opening kickoff back, even though the first time we got on defense and Rex Grossman broke the huddle and Rex Grossman snapped the football, I go back and I tell Cato June and Gary Brackett, Rex Grossman cannot beat us. I got this saw a look in his eyes. And and from that snap going forward, you knew that the Bears were going to try to play around Rex Grossman, mm -hmm. run the football, play defense, maybe get us get a special another special teams play. They weren't going to let Rex Grossman try to beat us. And at that point, we just tried to beat the hell out of Rex Grossman as many times as we could. And, and once we stopped the run, the game was basically over. We talk about uh, playoff speed, Super Bowl speed, how it's like a little bit different in these big games. In the trenches, though, is there is there Super Bowl strength? Are people pushing harder? Is it more physical? Uh, no, nah, it's not any more physical. Like, like once you get into the playoffs, uh, to me, there's there's preseason, there's regular season, there's postseason. And so, like, postseason just goes up a notch. And the reason it goes up a notch is because the competition is that much better. So the speed is, like, you often hear those cliches about the speed. Yeah, the speed is better because the competition is better. And so Olin Krutz is going to play faster then, you know, I don't know, some dude from Kansas City who can't play anymore because yeah. Olin Krutz should be in the Hall of Like he, he's, a, he's a Hall of Fame level type player. So he's going to play at a faster speed for sure. Yeah, that's an interesting way to think about it. I feel really dumb all these years being like the game's faster in the playoffs. Well, yeah, it's, it's the better teams that are playing. Yeah. That tend to have <laughs> much faster players. Yeah, yeah. it's a good <laughs> it's point. True. Although I will say that like the 49ers do feel like the faster team when you're just saying pure speed, team speed against the Chiefs, and I don't know if that's maybe the Chiefs just shape shifting into more of like a deliberate offense, uh, but it does feel like just looking on paper, they have a lot of really really fast guys, especially on the outside, and you know with McCaffrey, like it does feel like they have more speed. I was surprised that I saw somewhere 49er, the 49ers are a favorite, like by one and a half or something. Yeah, like, like they are. That that's surprising based on the way their defense is played, number one, and number two, the, the two quarterbacks in this game. The fact that Vegas wants you to take Brock Purdy over Patrick Mahomes, mm, I'm not sure I can do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but it, eh, No, I, I took eh. the Chiefs. I took the Chiefs because it is 
I, I'm trying really hard not to to have it swayed because there are parts of it that I start to think about, and it's like, listen, if the Niners just want to run the but if the Niners do what the Ravens didn't do and just be like, hey, yeah. Christian McCaffrey, here's Christian McCaffrey 30 times. I don't know yeah. if the Chiefs have a, a great answer for that, but at the end of the day, it is like, who who do you trust to make the big play in the fourth quarter? And the answer is always Patrick Mahomes. Let me ask you this, guys. Doesn't it feel like that if the 49ers don't get it done now, we're going to start to kind of say, well, are they ever going to get it done? Like, yeah. like how many times – how many times can this iteration of this defense and put in ex quarterback uh, and Kyle Shanahan and uh, the 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 wizardry of him as an offensive guy like they've been knocking on the door for a long time? If they don't get it done here, are we going to start to kind of question whether or not they can ever get it done? I don't know because they they do have a couple years under the Brock Purdy window because he's not going you know, he's not going to get paid for a little bit, so they can make some more additions. Or they could go out in the offseason, they could get a quarterback. And there are a couple quarterbacks that come to mind. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not have any Brock Purdy slander right now. I'm not slandering Brock Purdy. I'm just saying. You there's... just said they're going to go get another quarterback. No, I'm, That's I'm, Brock I'm, Purdy slander. I'm saying if they lose, there is one quarterback out there that Kyle Shanahan is in love with, like wants to marry. Kirk Cousins. Yes. Yeah. He's Man, a free I agent. Think that... I think that ship has passed. I do. I, do. I, I like Brock Purdy. I, we've we've been pretty consistent on this show, starting like week two or three this year. It's pretty early. Where you said Brock Purdy's just playing good football. He's you can say yeah. he's a good quarterback. It's okay to say that. You don't have to say that he's an elite like Patrick Mahomes guy that will carry a team to a Super Bowl on his own. But he's playing the game really well right now. And I no, I don't think he's a bad quarterback at all. I think I think the 49ers can win this game for sure. I do. Um, I think the game is going to come down to. Uh, two things. Number one, how does the 49ers defense handle the Chiefs offense from the standpoint of can they dominate the matchups they're supposed to win? Because on paper, the 49ers are supposed to dominate the two tackles that the Chiefs have. Mm -hmm. So Bosa, Bosa and Chase Young are supposed to have a field day. That's number one. Number two, how do you take away Travis Kelsey? I think if the 49ers are going to win, that's going to be the formula from a defensive standpoint. If you tell me the Chiefs win, win the game, then Travis Kelsey has a day, and there's got to be one more guy. Like, there's got to be an X factor. Somebody's got to help Mahomes and Kelsey. So is that MVS? Is that Rasheed Rice? Is that Gray? Is that Watson? Like, somebody's got to make a play other than Kelsey, I think, for the for the Chiefs to win this game. Because if you're, if you're saying, friend, you got to go into this game saying, if we lose the Super Bowl, we're going to lose because somebody not named Travis Kelsey beat me. So I don't know. I don't know how they do that, but they got to come up with a plan that way. Eighty-seven doesn't beat them. I think the the name might be you didn't name it, but it might be Pacheco because you saw what the True. you saw what the the Lions were able to do in terms of running the football against the Niners. And Pacheco is he's been awesome. Like he is the best running back that Patrick Mahomes has had, which kind of gets lost in the shuffle because Patrick Mahomes' story is he's finally got a defense, but Pacheco might be the guy. Yeah, man. By the way. Pacheco runs like I envision you waking up on a Saturday morning, <laughs> going to get donuts. Like, like that's how hard I envision you leaving the house, running toward the local donut stand every Saturday morning, the way he runs. Like, yeah. he runs angry. Yeah, it's, you're not wrong. He's, he's fun to watch. The other thing I, I am looking at is uh, the kicking situation. We are talking about not trusting a kicker. I think, yeah. I think the Chiefs have a much better kicker. Yes. Back in October watching Moody, I, you could see he missed a couple kicks. And even his makes, a lot of them are like very by the narrowest of margins. He's a little shaky, and I don't. I I would not trust a him. little. Yeah, yeah. Moody, he's a lot shaky, he, especially in the playoffs. But um, this whole season, like he's been a very very shaky kicker, and he's gotten away with a lot of it. But I just I I keep waiting for for it to bite them in the ass and it for it to, like to actually affect the outcome of a game in the playoffs. He's gotten away with it, but yeah, I'm not I'm not totally confident in that part of the game. Okay, so if we're going to do it this way, we're going to say kicker, advantage, Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Defense, advantage, Chiefs, right? The Chiefs have the better defense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, receivers, receivers, who, who would you? 49ers. 49ers. Is that a serious question? That's easy. Wait, is Kadarius Tony playing? Because that might affect it. <laughs> does, does, does it matter? I mean, <laughs> offensive line, 49ers. Yep. Yeah, um, Chiefs offensive line's played very well, though. 
They have. But the, but the two mean, tackles, pa- they got they, – they, they, hey, Patrick hey, Mahomes didn't get sacked till the first time he got sacked in the playoffs was, what, the third quarter of that Ravens game. Like, they have – they they've been underrated very good. Yeah, uh, quarterback – Chiefs probably Chiefs and then yeah. and then and then running back 49ers 49ers so, tight end ooh uh i mean tight end i, I even though i'm going to favor i'm going to favor Kelsey but i mean it's really that's a pick em, Yeah. to be honest with you Kittle's a dog Kittle's a dog all right so booger last question rowback question com. promo code take 20% off your first purchase Q-zips, polos hoodies joggers shorts promo code take go right now rowback.com all right, so is your is your official pick? Can we get your official pick? Is it Chiefs? No. Uh, as much as I, I think the Chiefs are phenomenal and Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and Kelsey are almost unbeatable, um, this is kind of a heart pick. Like, I've been knowing John Lynch a long time. I played with him. We won a Super Bowl. He's been knocking on the door. He's a Super Bowl champion as a player. He's in the Hall of Fame. He gets an opportunity to be a Super Bowl champion as a general manager. And I just think there's a certain thing – uh, to say about it being your time. Like, I just think it's the 49ers time. Like, how many times are they going to knock on this door and knock on this door? It was, we were one throw away against the Chiefs last time with Jimmy Garoppolo. If we would have had a healthy Brock Purdy last year, if, 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 if at some point, it's got to be your time. They're healthy. The defense, uh, I think it's good enough. Brock Purdy has been playing outstanding. I just think it's their time right now. So I'm picking the 49ers. I like it. I like it, Booger. I think I am too. I've crunched the numbers. And I'm going with Mahomes. I think I think I think me and you together, Booger, we can stop Patrick Mahomes. We're the ones. <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no question about it. All right. Well, Booger, thank you as always. You're the best man. We love having you on. Are you going to Vegas? Absolutely. I'll get to Vegas midweek next week and uh got a lot of food spots that I'm uh, already uh-huh. uh looking forward to hitting. Uh the game will be great. Um uh, looking forward to seeing the halftime show with Usher. Uh, yeah, it should, should be a good week. Are you guys going to be in Vegas? Yeah, we'll be there, be there, so we got to get together. We got to get together. No question. Let's connect offline, and, and, and let's, if we don't do anything but have a coffee or just yeah. have a big br- group hug, let's do it. Okay, yeah. sounds Love good, that. Booger. Love that. All right, Thank thanks you. so much, Boog. Booger was brought to you by HelloFresh. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most dish- delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price that you'll like delivered right to your door. No more staring blankly in the fridge wondering what to make for dinner. Give HelloFresh a try and dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from each week. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm-fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. Ditch the meal planning blues and the grocery store run with quick, convenient recipes delivered right to you. Just choose your meals and select your delivery date. HelloFresh handles the meal planning and shopping, so all you have to do is open your weekly box of fresh pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step recipes to get cooking. They say breakfast, it's the most important meal of the day. And HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. I love HelloFresh. It's delicious. It's fresh. It's simple. It's easy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash take free. Use code take free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's right. Free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash take free with code take free. Booger was also brought to you by Coors Light. Nothing like a, an ice cold Coors Light. I had an ice cold Coors Light last night on my birthday. Hit awesome. I love it. The mountains are blue and hanging with friends and family to watch the big game is the best. But as the game heats up, it can get intense. That's why Coors Light has that signature ice-cold refreshment to keep you feeling chill. For the big game, stock up on Coors Light and choose chill. You might even remember an iconic beer train that's known for spreading good vibes and Coors Light to those who need it. And after 12 years on hiatus, Coors Light's beer train is coming out of retirement for the big game. Talk about cracking open an ice-cold Coors Light. That's what I'm talking about. I love listening for the sweet sounds of Love Train. When it's time for a refresh, just open up a Coors Light. Coors Light's the best beer in the world. And the beer train, the chill train, iconic. Everybody remembers it. I'm so glad that it's back. It's a chill train. There's only one beer out there for the chillest big game, and that's Coors Light. Stock up or get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And now, here's Stavi. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend. It's Stavi, baby. 
Stavros Halkius. Um, this sucks because we were going to do this interview in Vegas <laughs> in Damn, person. Um, yeah. It was all planned for that, but we figured we still would, should have him on for 20 minutes. And, uh, Fuck. Yeah, dude, um, you fucked up. Your team fucked up. Uh, Your team should be playing in the Super Bowl, and they fucked up. Dude, I fucking know, dude. Is this any way to start a man who's grieving? Is this a way to treat me right off the fucking bat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such dick. You don't know. You don't know. You don't think I fucking know that big cat? <laughs> right. You think I fucking know it sucks dick and that we fucked up? And yeah. That we're fucked. Yeah. And that was, and that no team is ever that healthy in the fucking playoffs ever. And then we fucked. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. It sucks dick. So, I was, oh, so you're doing dude. well. You're doing well. I'm doing bad, dude. My entire <laughs> life has gone. No joke. This has set me back personally a month minimum. Like, I just emotionally, physically, I've been on a bender. Truly, like, I was sober. I've been getting fucked up all week. I'm I'm good. I think this is the last. I have to just throw away the weed in my house. All the, you know, the booze has been drank. I literally have gone back into, like, getting fucked up, getting high in the morning, ordering, like, you know, four hundred dollars worth of seamless throughout the day, just for me and the team. You know, just it's it's like a crack den in this fucking. I'm in Baltimore. It's just <laughs> there's shit everywhere. I was setting up a new house. I bought a fucking sauna. I bought a treadmill. None. Of, I haven't. I haven't exercised. It's my life has plummeted, bro. If I didn't, shit's going so bad. And <laughs> thank God I have to go work this weekend. Thank God. Like my life, my my like depression cave has been so bad that like. Going back on the road will be healthier for me. I have one weekend <laughs> on the road, and I, and just being on the road, I'm like, thank God, I can't. I can only do so much damage in a city I don't really know. I, I'm just fucked, dude. This sucks. I'm so depressed. Do you, do you think uh, <laughs> it's you think, so much dick? Dude. You think you would have drank more beer and more liquor and ate worse food? On Super Bowl week, or is like your depression week way worse for your body than that? That's see, that's the thing. Fifty, I was, I was kidding myself. I was like, because you know, I've gotten fat as shit this year. Like that was, yeah. And I'm like, damn, I need this. I need to like, I, I need to do like a little health sabbatical. Yeah, you were jacked and, up in 2020. And part of my fucking part of my thinking was like, um, the only small silver lining is at least because the Super Bowl is going to be so fun. You motherfuckers going to be there. So many friends just go to the Super Bowl. It was the first, it's in Vegas. I was going to do a show. You know, my friends uh, Segura and and Bert are fucking doing a show. I was going to hop on there. It was just going to be awesome. There's going to be so much shit. And I was like, well, at least I won't fuck my body up, and I'll just be at home. And I and I I promise you, I've done more damage in four days than I would have done in Vegas. Just being sad, not having any fun, and it's not even good. It's like. I've been eating the way like when a like when somebody gets fat for a roll. Like I've been leaving ice cream out and drinking it. You know what I mean? Like it's not even good, dude. I've been you know what a snack I had yesterday because I ate all the desserts. I just put butter on fucking. I put butter on crackers and slathered like syrup. All, like I'm just I'm just in like I'm in like fucking fat crackhead mode, dude. Where I'm just like I'm ripping the like I'm 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 a step away from like ripping the copper wire out of my house for fucking chicken wings <laughs> i'm fucked dude i didn't think i'd be this sad and i'm sadder than i've been in like years this like that was such a fucking brutal loss it felt bad the whole fucking time yep. i'm in the stadium right like we're there and it was like the first half of houston felt a little fucked and then the second half was one of the best moments of my life like just how lamar came out and it just what was so almost worse about that is we were tant it was tantalizing the whole fucking time. Right. It was like we're not at even at the very even after Zay fumbled, which no shot Zay played fucking great. Nobody should be mad at him. That's a fucking tough play, whatever, right? Even after Zay fumbles and it's like, okay, we're fucked. After that first initial, which by the way, that was like, you want to talk about the worst 10 seconds of my life? It's like that. It was like going from we just scored a touchdown on a sick drive, finally we're cooking, to the fucking Chiefs, these cocksuckers. That's how much. That's how much. Like the Illuminati is on their side. They get the touchback the next week. A weird thing happens to them, and they mm -hmm. just get the same fucking thing the next week. How the fuck is that fair? They don't have to suffer a fucking 
They only suffered one week a weird touchback, and they didn't fucking lose. <laughs> I fucking hate the Chiefs so much, dude. And that's the other thing. It had to be the Chiefs. <laughs> if it's Buffalo, if it's Buffalo, whatever. Those fucking fans, they deserve, like, it would have hurt, but I wouldn't have wanted to kill myself. I wouldn't be thinking, like, oh, fucking a bunch of commercial act. Like, this is this is the most psyop, most fucking fixed shit of all time. <laughs> Even though we suck. Look, our offense sucked dick. Let me, I, and to me, I don't know if you guys can tell, I didn't prepare it all for this. I haven't listened. <laughs> I haven't listened to sports media. I haven't, like, done anything. I've been in my cave being fucking pissed. But, like, our offense sucked dick. I understand that. Todd Munkin, I don't know what the fuck happened. What the fuck? Why the fuck we were just doing all these fucking little screen passes and shit? And why the fuck we didn't try running it down their throats? And even if we had run the like, if we even if we had run the like caveman Greg Roman fucking full running back offense, we still we probably would have fucking won that game. What the fuck happened? Mm-hmm. Ten, fucking our offense got got like scared. I, I don't know why the fuck we didn't just try and run it down their fucking throats at least a little bit. But it's still fixed. It is also still fixed. So, that ref can suck my dick. He would that those personal fucking the taunting on Zay, fucking Travis Kelsey, that fucking cocksucker getting anything he wanted, right? God forbid that God forbid he, anything ever gets fucking whistled on him. And just like we it was fucking crazy, dude. It was fucking insane. So you so I, I text you after the game. I do take a little bit of blame, uh, because I put on the purple camos. And it yeah. feels like that was not a great sign. And, and can I say something? You got the off-brand ones. I, well, it got you sent to me. Ri- it got sent to me. You didn't get me. the right ones. And oh. You fucked this big cat. I did you notice. Didn't have the right armor. Yeah, the the ones big cat were wearing. It was like darker. Like black yeah. was the primary color almost. And that's the thing. It's like it's like sending somebody in Iraq with faulty body armor, dude. <laughs> you fucking you didn't have the right fucking stuff, and we got fucked because Donald of it, Rumsfeld sent yeah. the cargo over. I wasn't back. ready for it, but you. So we were texting throughout the game, and we texted after, and you said you're going uh, full conspiracy mode on this. What? Yes. Yeah. What? What's the conspiracy here, other than Taylor well, Swift in the Super Bowl? I mean, I wish again I didn't prepare because I wanted this to be fully just like from the heart but just look i'm sitting it just feels like well first of all warren sharp you're, you're you guys just have him on all the time you put that thing out about this ref how he's the only motherfucker that you know the it's the only time the only time a home field has a disadvantage in whistles is when they put this guy on the fucking field and it's like oh what a fucking coincidence who gets who gets fucking assigned to this right yep and and it's good by the way that we finally I will say what's cool about Warren Sharp is that we finally weaponized autism fully to football. It feels like it took too long, but like, yeah, of course. That these are the guys you should be doing. That's the so I, I respected that. But then it was just like all these fucking calls, dude. It, I, I haven't gone back. I can't I can't watch any cape. I can't do anything, but the taunting comes to mind. Um, you know, just a the bunch likely, of just fucking likely they, 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 oh, you you, you weren't watching God. the broadcast, but it was it was a terrible throw. Lamar deserves all the blame for that, but on the broadcast, yes, yes. the announcer, the 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 booth ref was like, as you can see, the contact comes in after the ball, and they show the replay, and he literally tackled him before the ball arrived. No, yeah, dude, it was it was so fucked, and I'm sure there's. I just really legitimately feel that it was the kind of thing where the NFL just did everything that was like, look, we're not gonna outright, you can't outright fix anything, wink, wink. But like, if every, you know, no one's gonna be mad if a couple calls go you know, one way or the other. And I just feel like that pass interference was bullshit. The taunting was bullshit. We had a lot of dog shit fucking calls, a lot of roughing the passers that I think were fucking caught. There's a couple roughing the passers that I thought were bullshit, whatever. And look, it was just, the NFL had a lot of fucking money to make from, from a purely, from a purely like uh, you know, market share. Like we would have cost the NFL so much money. It would have been awesome. It would have yeah. been fucking sick. And also it would have been sick to just like, the people on the fucking commercial, you know, State Farm doesn't get banged for their butt because they're cock sucking. Uh, their whole crew doesn't get to be in the Super Bowl, right? Like everybody who put all their fucking money in Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, and oh, uh, and like we would have, we would have delayed Travis Kelsey's inevitable Amazon Prime 
fucking direct to Amazon <laughs> action movie career that that fucking prick is clearly trying to set up. Doesn't even fucking focus on football. Gets a fake relationship. Gets the vaccine. So the Illuminati give him a fucking billionaire girlfriend. And so he could be in fucking movies. Hasn't fucking focused on football all fucking week, all year. The team sucks dick. The team sucks fucking dick. And then the, and the NFL just fixes it so that they can fucking go. Because it's a better storyline. They get fucking little girls to buy Stanley Cup fucking chief gear now. Now we got fucking Travis Kelsey on Stanley Cups in third grade. Fucking congratulations, Roger Goodell. You can't suffer! I you fucking choke! God, it fucking pisses me off. They, okay. And it's just like, that. it had to be the Chiefs. They weren't even good! That's the thing that fucking kills me! We stopped Patrick Mahomes! Our defense did what we needed to do! God damn it, dude. We did, uh, we did what we needed to do. We couldn't score more than 10 fucking points. Oh. God. <laughs> It's that good. fumble too it just will haunt me, and I don't. I mean, Zay's the man. It's just like just put that touchdown in. Ah, oh, it was fucking brutal. It was, it was fucking brutal, dude. It's going. It it's going well. Do you have a? <laughs> Stavi, I I don't want to. I don't want to blame you because obviously yeah. you you know you've been a Ravens fan. You've been long suffering. Before the game, uh, Justin yes. Tucker's warming up. Travis Kelsey and Mahomes start to bully him. Uh, start to shove him around, get in his head I a little I, bit. Oh. You were at the stadium. Why? I was, why didn't you stop Travis Kelsey? That, that's you know what? Hand up. That's on me. I didn't even. See, I was on the other side of the field. If I had seen that those fucking thugs had had gone had, had accosted the goat, a man in his in his home stadium. Hey, you wanted to play at home, you fucking Chiefs? Maybe fucking don't podcast. Podcasting's for us, you piece of shit. That's another problem I have with the Kelsey. Now he's, now they're coming on my fucking corner. They get to be fucking hot, famous. You know, the other one has a family. They've got fucking Super Bowls. They don't. I don't even get podcasting. I have to lose to the team that's trying to take the fucking food off my family's table. Those fucking cocksuckers. I came from the podcasting sewers. I came from Cumtown, and they get to fucking just. They get to just have a, the most famous sports podcast in the world. God, I fucking hate that. I fucking hate that team so much. Oh. I, if they win, I'm gonna be so pissed. Oh if they, man. And they probably will. They probably fucking will. <laughs> um, yeah, I should have fucking honestly, PFD. I should have fucking if I had known. I I honestly maybe should have even just I uh, strapped a bomb to myself and hugged. Tra I should have just gone. I should have just gone fucking. I should have just taken one for the team and just strapped a fucking bomb a vest on and just fucking hugged Travis Kelsey and just fucking Blood whispered into his ear. This is for podcasting, you piece of shit. This is for thinking you can do what I do. And then we fucking both explode. And then at least, and then the Ravens win. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> Damn, dude. Are you? Are you? So, are you gonna watch the Super Bowl? No, fuck. I, I, I'm not watching that fucking dog. That's the other thing, dude. So, okay, I'm in the fucking, I'm in the stadium, right? And I'm, I'm obviously, I want to kill myself. It's one of the worst moments I've ever felt in my life. Seeing those fucking pieces of shit set up their, you know, set up the fucking uh, stage, uh, you know, on, on m and Bank felt horrible. I'm just sitting in that, I'm sitting in the suite that, you know, that I was in. Uh, I was outside the whole time, but I'm sitting inside now wanting to kill myself, eating, eating just, you know, buffalo chicken egg rolls that have been under a, a heat lamp for five, six hours at that point. I'm just like starting to numb myself with whatever dog shit I can find. And I'm watching the game and at least the second game is like, all right, the line, like if the Lions were in it, it's like, all right, I can root for a team that it's a good story. They haven't, you know, done anything. Fuck you. Fuck the, the 49ers can suck my dick also, whatever. Um, I just wanted the Lions to win. I'm like, all right, if they win, that's one thing. And they're up big time. And then, you know, it takes a fucking hour to get out of a stadium in traffic. I couldn't pull up the NFL app on my phone. I was too hurt to even watch football on my phone in the car. I'm just staring blankly, like, thinking that I have to make a Ronnie video, even though I'd rather kill myself in that moment. <laughs> and as soon as I get home, the Snyder's won? Like, it's, I couldn't even have, like, one one nice thing to root for and keep me. Now I got to root for – I got to root for the – I guess I do have to root for the Niners. They're Soder's team, whatever. I guess they haven't won shit in a while. But it's just not the same. The lines would have been fun. Anyway, whatever, dude. I can't watch the fucking Super Bowl. No. And here's the thing that's going to make – you guys want to hear something fucked up? And by the way, happy birthday, boys. Thank but you. You want to hear something fucked up? You know when my 35th birthday is? Oh, is it Super Bowl Sunday? February 11th. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, God. You understand that? I'm going to watch the Chiefs 
Bears win on my fucking birthday? No, I'm not fucking doing that. Oh, Fuck God. that, dude. Yeah, it's and here's what's fucked up. I had started I had been I had, I was making deals with God, right? I thought I was like, okay, Super Bowl's on my thirty fifth birthday. My this year of my life has been the weirdest year ever, where it's like I just by accident kind of got famous. I still don't really understand what happened. And I was like, all right, some kind of like gypsy curse on my family gave us one awesome year. And then the second I turned 35, it's over. And I just thought, just let me get the fucking birthday. And mm. let me get the Super Bowl out of this. Take it all away. Take my fucking cancel me. Take my take it all. Go, you know, foreclose on my home. But let me just get to the fucking let me have one more beautiful moment on my 35th birthday. And I started thinking like, yeah, like something. And I was don't get me wrong. This, the, I was waiting for bad shit to start happening to me, but I just felt like there was a poetic thing of like, hey, one good year of my life, yeah, and it, we get the Super Bowl, and then it could go to shit from there. But no, God had to remind me there's nothing special about you, you fat piece of shit. You what? just got lucky with fucking crowd work clips. Life is pain. No <laughs> one, no one deserves anything. No one gets to enjoy anything uh, except the except. Are fucking the puppet masters who have appointed the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> the fucking Super Bowl champions for the rest of their lives. Savvy, it, it might have saved your life though. Like ha having yeah, a birthday in Vegas on Sunday no, you're, you're after the right. Ravens win. Yeah. Like I'd put Stavi surviving yeah. at like yeah. I don't know plus three hundred. <laughs> it would have been bad, bro, for sure. I would have fucking the like I would have. I would have done whatever it takes to get to actually celebrate with the Ravens. You know, I was slowly meeting like it was so fucked up because I was like, felt like I was meeting guys on the team, people in the organization. I felt like it was possible to mm -hmm. do that. And yes, you're right. I would have gotten more fucked up than I've been in years. I would have spent God knows how much money on drugs, dick pills and like high end Vegas prostitutes to celebrate. <laughs> it would have been a really fucked up scene. But I wanted it. PFD. Yeah, it would have been fun. I yeah. fucking wanted it. OK, I, it would have been I, fun. Also, they took money out. Of, you want to, like? I was gonna start charge. I was gonna charge people a hundred grand for Ronnie appearances at the Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? I was about to get rich, dude. I was about to fucking cash in. Well, can, can I give you some good news? Because we um we had Joe Flacco oh, on the show news. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yes, and that's we yeah, brought that's you cool. up, and he's a big fan. He's been watching your shit. He wants to meet you. He wants to hang out. Hell yeah, that's awesome. That does feel good, and I can't wait to hang out with Joe. I'm just still fucking mourning this team. It's like. It'll help. It'll help for sure. Hang out with Joe for sure. But it's like, even in the like, in the grand scheme of this fucking team, it's like Joe's a great example where it's like, what I love about the Ravens, what's been awesome about being a Ravens fan is like, we're that team where it's like, whenever you're talking about the best teams, right? It, we don't immediately come to mind. And then you're like, well, don't forget about Baltimore. And then you're like, they win every, about every fucking generation. You know, we've spoiled a bunch of big, like, we fucked the Patriots up a couple times. Like, we were spoiler for them. And what this just felt perfect, dude. This felt like, here comes our Super Bowl for this generation, right? Then we can, then anything, the rest of Lamar's career is cake. All the expectations are gone. We get to play spoiler to the fucking Chiefs again. We get to play spoiler to the dynasty of this generation. I wanted Lamar to have a win over fucking Patrick Mahomes so fucking bad. And, and then it's like, everyone's healthy. I don't even want to talk. I'm going to, you know, I got the Mike McDonald notification. I almost started crying again when I fucking saw that he's on the plate for the, or he's coaching the Seahawks. Like we're going to get, we're going to poach, they're going to poach our fucking coaching staff. I don't even, I haven't looked at the cap. That's probably going to be, I, I assume it's bad, but I don't know. I'm just, this felt right. This felt like just how that, that Flacco run was just felt beautiful. And it was, it was a culmination. It was, you know, Ray Lewis's last year, Ed Reed gets one. Flacco plays out of his fucking mind and we get one. And then, Fucking pay Joe a hundred billion dollars after that when I don't give a fuck. That's what this was gonna feel like. Hey, if we lose our awesome coaches, they're gone. If we lose some players because they have to go get paid, I get it. But now all of that happens for nothing. Yeah. All of that fucking happens. And next year, our our you know you're the number one. You know you're you're what your top seed. Your schedule's gonna be fucking harder. That cocksucker Joe Burrow's gonna be fucking back. At least the Browns have sex crime. At least the Browns can't sign Joe Flacco again to surprisingly lead them you know they still have to at least the browns have to fucking have deshaun's deshaun's bitch ass over there but still you know and the steelers still suck that's gonna feel good if they get a quarterback in this draft i might you know if things start going good for the steelers and browns too though i don't know man this just felt right this felt like the fucking year fuck 
dude. All right, so well, fucked. stop. This is this has been great. Does it at least feel like this has been therapeutic? Do you at least feel like you've gotten a little out? Because I'm I'm happy you didn't consume any uh, media and you haven't done anything because I feel like we got basically like post game thoughts from you four days later. I've been, I've been I've just been in like a cooler. I've been preserving these thoughts with getting with so much so many edibles and so many fucking you know Bud Lights. That I'm just like that. It's just like and Chinese food. I'm packed. This is basically right after the game. Uh, it does feel a little therapeutic. I have to start my life over. I have to get back. I have no more weed. I think I have to cook my own meals uh, for, for the time being. I have to. I have to kick my. I was dude. I was two weeks clean on night ice cream, and I relapsed <laughs> big time, bro. I have to kick that tonight. No more night ice cream. It does actually feel. This felt like all right. I got it out yeah. and I can fucking, you it's know, healthy. I can live my life. But God, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be in Vegas so bad. We would have had fun. It's going to be fucking awesome. We, we would have had, had such fun. a good time. We would have had fun together. Anyway. All right. Anyway. Well, stop. All right, boys. Thank you so much. This was hilarious. I feel like the therapy, you know, let's let's start. Let's let's put one good day on the schedule. That's right. One, one good day, day at a time. One day, one at, day at a time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you're not going to kick night ice cream just like that. It's just one day in front of another, in front of you're another, right. you're and you're right. going to get you're back. Right. Yeah. You're right, brother. All right. Thanks, boys. Stavi was brought to you by our great friends over at Manscaped. That's right. Manscaped's back. Manscaped, Manscaped, Manscaped. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Trim your balls, and your date will thank us, too. What's up, fellas? Valentine's Day is knocking. Manscaped is the remedy for what the love doctor ordered. Valentine's Day, you got to be looking your best. Let's talk about the hero of Valentine's Day. It's the Lawnmower 5.0. The electric trimmer features skin safe technology, guarding your V Day treasure against any grooving mishaps. We've all been there. I know I've been there. You accidentally cut yourself a little bit. It's not pretty, it's not easily fixable. Don't make that mistake. Don't shave with a razor, don't shave with a trimmer that's not meant for your balls for your, your nether regions, use a Manscaped. Use that lawnmower 5.0. It comes with their biggest and brightest LED spotlight yet. It's brighter than your best romantic smile. Perfect for precise grooming, even in the trickiest spots, and it's waterproof too, making shower shaves a breeze. But hey, that's not everything the Love Doctor ordered. The package also features the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose hair trimmer and Manscaped's liquid formulations and two free goodies the Shed Travel Bag, and Boxers 2.0 because comfort is king for all my dogs. And for a happy ending, there's the Manscaped Refined Cologne. It's the Valentine's Day touch, and it'll add to your grooming routine. Elevate your grooming routine and set the stage, stage for a romantically smooth celebration. And for the Bearded Kings, Manscaped brings you the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, designed to shave your scruff effortlessly. It sculpts cheek lines. It maintains beard styles, giving you that suave look for your romantic moments. Seamlessly handling even thicker beards is the perfect tool for a polished, date-ready appearance. Get 20% off with free shipping with code PMT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use promo code PMT because your grooming update awaits, ready to charm your Valentine's dates. Okay, Firefest of the week time. Before we do that, though, the baseball video is finally out on all platforms. Go watch it. Go watch it. It is PFT pitching against the UIC Flames. Uh, I caught Jake, Hank, and Max in the outfield. We were able to afford 90 seconds of Joe Buck. The rest of the broadcast is uh, done by our great friend Nick Tarani, who is a great broadcaster. Uh, so go check it out. Very fun video. I, I watched it earlier today, and uh, Nick is very funny, but Jerry is awesome. Jerry like, is um, Jerry as yeah. the umpire. He was born. It's a, a part he was born to play. His strike calls are legendary. Jerry was great as the umpire. Yes, he was. Yeah, and there are allegations that I may or may not have used spider tack. I can't comment on that right now. Uh, Jerry, I think, called a fair game for the most part, and he didn't catch me using spider tack. So even if I did use it, I got away with it. I was told that there might have been some cuts, specifically me breathing heavy into the mic. Uh, false. Oh, you left them in? Did not leave them in. There were cuts of PFT breathing. Oh, let's go. So it wasn't me. <laughs> so I was getting I was getting gassed up there. I Listen, was told that it was me. Like two days after I, I did the pitching thing, my arm was sore. My legs were sore. I was thrown off the mound. I, I haven't thrown a baseball in years. Everything was sore. I, I got through it. 
with just grit, determination, a little bit of uh, nicotine, and a little bit of cheating, and some some good play from my guys out in the field. So love it. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a good video. I think. Yeah, it's fun. Everyone's mic'd up too, so it's like a little bit of Hank Con- or uh, Nick commentary, and then a lot of like. Breathing heavy. Breathing. <laughs> There's a little bit of breathing heavy. I was gas. Jerry, Big Cat, and I haven't seen PFD. it, but if I was, if, if my mic's in there, I'm pretty sure my only line was just "Don't hit it to me, don't hit it to oh, me." Oh, that me. yeah, that was commented on. Yeah, that was the only thing Hank said. The uh, uh, don't hit it to me. Uh, by the way, Jim Harbaugh did his introductory press conference. I just want to play one clip. I don't I have no idea what he said in it, but the caption is "Don't let the powder blues fool you." So this probably is going to be a good Jim okay. Harbaugh quote. That's, that's where we are right now. Humble and hungry, and we're gonna. We're going to respect all our opponents, and we're going to we're going to strive that uh, you know we're going to earn their respect, and uh, we're going to earn our winning. Um, you know, tough team. You know, the resilient team, a relentless team, uh, physical team. <sighs> this uh, is what I wanted. What we're going to aspire to be. Don't let the powder blues fool you. <laughs> I like that. That's Good. what we're going to aspire to do. Fuck, I Good. wanted that so bad. When he says physical, he wants to just beat someone up. Yeah, he takes a deep breath and says, yeah. physical. It's like a Dan Quinn line almost. Yeah, yeah. fuck. All right, Hank, Firefest. Yeah, um, we were here late on Sunday doing the show. I have been having you know trouble sleeping. I got a show coming up Tuesday. Not sure if I've mentioned that. Um, but we were here late, and I've had a tough time falling asleep, so I slept for like two hours. We had a three-hour commercial shoot here Monday morning, first thing, 8 a.m. So I was coming off like two or three hours of sleep. Got here, asked the director, you know, what exactly the shoot is, and they gave me, uh, all of us, they're like, all right, take your shirt off. Here's a two-inch spandex shorts that you have to wear. I I think calling it spandex, by the way, is a little bit generous. It was pretty much like a pantyhose. I could see I could see the, the head of my cock. Yeah. yeah. I, the veins were visible. Yeah. And we just had to stand around basically naked yeah. in the cold. Yeah. Uh, it was very I, cold. I, I, two hours I was not morning. cold at all. I was very cold. Yeah. No, I'm just that small. So, yeah. that was, I didn't look. That sucked. Did you guys I look? I did not look. There, there were a couple shots. They told me to look. Yeah, I there, had to look. There were a couple shots where they told us we had to look at each other's penises, and uh, we we discussed it. We we're like, hey, we're not going to look because we're all we weren't really hanging low and lazy at the time. As we mentioned, it was cold in the room. It was early, and uh, I I made a concerted effort not to look. But it sounds like Big Cat might have taken a peek. I saw I s- a little. What'd you see? <laughs> not much. Okay. Well, I was going to do a compliment. I, PFT's got some good sized balls. I do. Yeah. I saw them. They call them big meaty clappers. Yeah. What the fuck, Hank? They told me. They were like- Why did you look? We all were looking right in they front, They literally not actually. directed. They're like, all right, now That's look That's such down. a lie. They told nah, us you to look, look in front. No. You got to look. Give us your honest assessment. I wasn't there. Tell, the tell yeah. the listeners what you thought of being Big Cat's penises. I mean, again, not much, but I was like, damn, Big Cat's probably bigger than me. Fuck. Oh, that is that's, that's a, that is a fuck. I ain't, I ain't got anything. But it was cold, so it was cold. It was, it was cold. cold. You're right. It was cold. Very cold. It was cold. We got people just peeking in while we're talking about our dick sizes. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, they heard. Yeah, <laughs> those are some clients. <laughs> it's all right. It's very small. It was for. <laughs> and Dave, it's 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 it, listen, my you know one gets scared of my dick. It's not intimidating enough to be like, whoa, I've put had that her, thing away. There, there I was, think I just get laughed at if I, if I was like a flasher. They'd just yeah. be like, oh, that's cute. White Sox, Dave just popped his head into uh, Big Cat and I were in a meeting with some other people yesterday. <sighs> like six people in the room, clearly meeting. Dave ran up to the window, looked at me, and mouthed, was like, what he mouthed? He said, are you in a meeting? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked around, I was like, yes. And then he walked away for two seconds, came back, and was like, basically called me out of the meeting. And then I walked out, he's like, sorry, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, I didn't want to interrupt, you have to come out. We had we we're doing handball. He's like, I have to leave at three forty five. Just letting you know. That was it. That's it. I mean, White Sox save is such a jack. Like, well, I, like, well, I could have just texted me that on 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 Tuesday when we had pause here and we gave the big check for Stella Blue Coffee. We we're playing with the puppies, giving the big check. They asked me how Stella's doing, and White Sox Dave was just like, "Oh, did you get Stella from Pause?" I was like, "Yeah, dude. That's that's what this whole thing is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's just he's the best. He's the best. I love White Sox Dave." All right, PFT. 
Uh, yeah, it has been a very long week. I can't even remember all the stuff that we did. Uh, but part of my week has been uh, having the pleasure of babysitting Billy Football, mm. who came to the Chicago office, mm -hmm. which has been everything that I remember it being, and maybe a little bit more. Uh, he was late on Tuesday morning showing up. Now, to his credit, he stayed, I guess that was Wednesday morning. He no, stayed. he was, yeah, so he was late it, on Tuesday, he, too? No, well, he was on time on Tuesday. Oh. But then at night, we did Jerry After Dark, and yep. Billy, to his credit, Big Cat called him was like, we need help finding all these fucking needles in this haystack. Billy answered the phone and said, I'm there and just showed up and helped, I guess. And then helped. didn't really. Didn't really. Yeah. He found a needle. He found a needle. And then um, so we were all up a little bit late on Tuesday night. Right. Get to the office on Wednesday morning, have an early thing at like 10 a.m. We're supposed to be there for. And uh, I get a text from Billy being like, hey, I'm going to be there uh, before 1030 at some point. And I was That's like, a good way to phrase it. You know, right? I, I was like, OK, by the way, the time that he sent me that text. 10:23. Oh, okay. And he says, uh, "I'm going to be there before 10:30." Uh, <laughs> That's great. It's great. And then he got there at 10:30. Uh, so that was a fucking lie. So he showed up and he was like, "Sorry, dude. Sorry, I'm late. Um, I was up until like 4:30 a.m. getting into a rivalry with somebody about cheetahs." No, 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 no. He goes, "Sorry, I was up. I was cleaning up the hay." And then like 20 minutes later, he was like. Actually, I was getting into a fight with somebody about cheetahs. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. clean up the Yeah, because yeah. first it was I was doing work, and then it slowly came out. I was getting into a fight with somebody about yes. cheetahs. So I, I just got a lot of Billy football this week. Yeah. It. And the, another fire fest is that um, Hank Lockwood doing stand-up last night, he's really fucking funny. Like Hank is by the pay per view. Gaslighting. Hank, Gaslighting. Hank is so Gaslighting. Hank is so, so fucking funny. good at stand up comedy. It's not fair. Like there, I was sitting next to comedians, and they were like, "This isn't his first time, right?" And I was like, oh. "He's never done this before." And the and he was getting applause. He was getting laughs, tears. He was actually really good. Like I was proud of Hank. Stop. When he was on. You were good, Hank. This is gaslighting. What have I? I've been telling the entire office how good you were. All I know is is I caught Max and PFT having a conversation about me, and I turned the corner, and then the second that PFT saw me, he goes, we'll talk about it later, we'll talk about it later, we'll talk about it later. So that didn't make me feel good. I'm telling everyone that you were really good. This is because, later. Because you were. I didn't want to say that to your face, but you were very, very good, and people should have not very high- Not buy pay-per-view. No, they should have very high expectations. Just take PFT's word for it. Yeah. Do not go to barstool.tv slash PPV. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. And buy it. Not worth it. Not worth it. Definitely not. Uh, okay, my fire Actually. fest is we did have a very long week. We had the shoot where everyone looked, where Hank looked at both of our cocks. Um, we, what? Continue. No, go ahead. Uh, no, it's part of it. I'll, I'm, I think you're going to get to it. We looked for needles in a haystack for six hours. We got hay fever. We got hay fever. I still like am not have not fully recovered because I went to sleep at like, I don't know, 3 a.m. and got up at 6.30. That sucked. Yep. Uh, we played handball. My question was going to be, after playing handball, I play with pros, do you still believe your take about Olympics? I believe it even more. Same. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it even more. Josh <laughs> Allen could be the best handball player in the world right now. I was thinking about it because the argument with soccer is like if our best athletes played soccer. Yes. You don't even have just quarterbacks. Yes. You could even have bad, unmobile quarterbacks. Imagine they trying would... to stop Lamar. Yeah. Like, no. It yeah. can't. CJ Stroud, like you could. Well, just maybe if they take, had the playoffs, you could just take quarterbacks and they would win a gold medal. Yes, yeah, yeah. I it, think like two weeks of training. It's I, very fun sport. The guys who came out were so so nice. JD especially, the, he was a great ambassador of the game. Explained the whole game to us like so much fun. Who who were the? They were from Columbus, right? Oh, yeah, they were from all over. Yeah, they yeah. took work off. They took. They were the the coolest off. dudes. So much fun. Like they showed us the game. I love the game. I I want to play the game again, but. And to their credit, I brought it up to them, and they said that it was more the Euros get upset about that. Because I was like, you guys don't think – like, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen would be awesome at this. They're like, yeah, of course they would. Yeah. So they totally – they were normal guys who totally understood, and it's the Euros. So we got to get Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes to beat the Euros. I think it can happen. For America. Yes. Um, <clears throat> but my fire fest goes into that little gap there where we were up till 2 in the morning, which – Needles in a Haystack was one of the most difficult things we've done, but I also, like, I found myself missing it because it was just guys bonding in the most ridiculous setting. Yeah, I do miss the hay. Yeah, a little bit. But anyway, uh, PFT's birthday on Wednesday, I woke up and I tried to send him a happy birthday tweet, and I completely phrased it wrong, and I feel really bad about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Said, happy birthday to my partner in crime, yeah. PFT. He makes work fun every day and makes me look good just sitting next to him. Uh 
wouldn't want to do a show with anyone else. Also, it's Stuart Finer's birthday from Slips and Picks. Uh, I got I got a few tags in that. Yeah. Um, and and I didn't read it the wrong way. And then everybody started replying right. to it. And I was like, oh, yeah. I think I was, Big Cat just called me ugly. I was trying to say short. that like being with PFT it, makes me better, like a funnier person. I know what you meant. Yeah. And then I it came across as like, I like sitting next to him because I look better. No, you just listen. I've gotten stuff like that before. You basically I phrased it wrong. You basically said like, "Oh, no, I love you." You, you know, you got that. It's good boyfriend dick. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So my bad on that. But I, you, you understood what I was saying. I, I understood. But then, yeah, I, I, got, I got, started. People started replying, and they're like, "Oh, that's fucked up to say." I was like, "Wait, what? I do?" Yeah. No, it, it was very nice, and I, I speak for Big Cat too when I say thank you to everybody that reached out. Ha, selling your celebrating your birthday as a thirty nine year old male is a little bit weird. Uh, which is why we don't really talk about it that much on the show. Never talk about it. Um, but Never it, do like streams or anything. It, it did. Needles in a haystack. It did, it did mean <laughs> a lot to me, and I know it meant a lot to Big Cat, yes. all the people that reached out and said happy birthday. So we do love you guys. Yes. For that. Yes. In 40, we got to do something big. Yeah. Edward 40 hands. Yeah. And yeah. then try to find some needles. Not Core is light 40. I would, I would do the needles in the haystack again. 40 needles. I was, I was, it was fun. The only bad part about it was the hay fever that we got because yeah. I woke up the next day and I felt worse when I woke up, probably because yeah. of lack of sleep and also just inhaling all that dust. You blow your nose and it's black. Shout out to farmers, by the way. I know we have a lot of farmers that listen to this podcast. Shout out to you guys. For they were just- mad. We put a, there's a, there's, oh, so mad. There's a full recap video, uh, Viva TV, and everyone was calling them. What were they calling them? Bales of hay? But yeah, barrels of hay. Bar- hey, was calling them, shout out Paige. She's was the best. calling them barrels of barrels hay. Of hay. We also, and there was a lot of farmers mad, like, you fucking city fucks. Well, yeah. <laughs> bales. We also had, uh, we, we disposed of the hay in our alley, uh, which we have like a little strip of grass and like whatever. And you can dispose of hay? You just put we it just outside. put it outside, yeah. but we put it in a big like mound, and then we had a couple people hit me up, which is a very funny like how- how niche and unique this complaint is. They're like, so hopefully next time these guys do it, they'll learn that you just don't throw it in a big like pile. I was like, okay, my bad. I had no idea. What do they want us to do? I guess either donate it, like Billy was saying, to a horse uh, charity. Yeah, Billy was looking for a horse shelter to give it to. Also, I guess you're not supposed to keep it in a big pile because rats will start living in it. That kind of makes sense. That part makes sense. Yeah. Paige told me she was putting it back there so that we could build a paintball arena for it. We are. We spread it out already. And they said also, which also makes sense, is like it's a fire hazard. If you just yeah. have a big mound of hay. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, we're not the smartest. Uh, okay, Jake, finish us off. Yeah, first off, Hank, I want to apologize for screwing up the backup of the bonk list. It's all right. Uh, second of all, I want to say we'll get him next year, but. Didn't sound like you accepted the apology. Backup boy is a very funny name, <laughs> and I, a very I would laugh every time you said that. <laughs> Do you oh. want me to back you up this year? Just on everything. <laughs> Do you want him to back you up? I, official backup boy. <laughs> you want to see Jake back it up? I don't want to say this in front of you guys. What? Don't take your headphones off. Okay. Jake, you should make your own list, and then when it gets close to doing the bunk list, I'll just take that. All right, okay. So Hank's doing less work. No problem. No, no. no. Yes, I heard yes, all yes. That. Back me up. No, but Hank's okay. he's uh, he's being a good director. He's yeah, the, yeah. he's managing. That's true. It's teamwork. Yeah. Yep. It's called delegating responsibility. Independent uh, oversight. Yeah, exactly. You're you're being a leader of men. Uh, we're gonna have the same ones, but just in case, we can compare notes beforehand. But just a heads up, it's not gonna have January of 2024. Okay, that's fine. By the way. Uh, one last thing about none Billy. of us did anything horny. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be shocking. <laughs> I, it probably doesn't shock anyone that Billy like got in like screaming matches on the basketball courts within like the first hour of being here. Yep. Yep. We were taping and sitting in the studio and just heard Billy yelling about no, you the score's wrong. Yeah. Uh, we were playing sevens too, which is just a three point shooting game, and I, he bricked like fifteen in a row. And he's like, just got to get used to these rims. Well, it's just a it's a basketball rim. I miss Billy. Yeah. I miss him. It was three days. Was good. Yeah. <laughs> it was great to be reunited. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, Jake, go ahead. Yeah. So I botched the birthday cake presentation. I put out the lit candles right outside, and Max saved me from lighting this office on fire. Oh, by why? The, because by the time I was about to present, the candles were basically out. That would not have forgot. lit the office on fire. It, so, it would have just gone out in the cake. Correct. Oh. Got it. But it could have. You don't no, know. Yeah. No, I actually think that might be the safest place to light <laughs> candles is in a birthday cake. 
Yeah, but they oh, burned. so it would have been fine? It, Where would they have burned to? It, the, the wax would have just <laughs> melted down into the cake. Into the cake. Yeah. Uh, my, my additional fire fest is that <laughs> I should have pushed that cake into jail. Yeah, you, I was actually in. kind but of upset. I, yeah. I, I would have I felt bad about no, it. No, I wouldn't have. Yeah. My additional, additional fire fest is I screwed up the Joe Buck script. We talked about this beforehand. I was I meant to throw a jab at every little person. Oh yeah, Hank or, or Jake said that he threw a jab at every person. His jab was, and there's Jake Marsh, who someday wants to take my job in the booth. Yeah. That's not a jab. Yeah, I under, well, <laughs> I okay, I saw it the wrong way. I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's the opposite of a jab. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Oh, screw me. It was just funny Moron. watching it. Like, idiot, bad guy. I think it was good, Jake. Don't beat Thanks. yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. All right. Numbers. 18. 39. 20. Today's a day. Three. Eight. Actually, 40. Someone's getting it today. Eight. I'll go Three. 39. Three. Three. Someone's getting 99 it today. Probe. 21. Someone's getting it today. What's your number, Max? 20. 40 like a melody in my head. 28. Ah. 28. What's your number, Max? 20. Oh, that's not even close. It's kind of close. Should we do another? I got not one really. of them. You want to do one more? Yeah. Let's do oh, one. we have to pre-tape next week. <gasps> oh, yeah, we do. And we have to ask every guest that comes on. Unless. <laughs> Wait, did we do Shane one? Shane will be here. I think we've already done one for next week. What? Haven't we? No. Oh, I don't think so. With. Okay. Let's just do one more right here. Okay. All right. This one counts. 40. Three. 71. I'm going back to 71. Eight. 18. What's everyone else's? 8. 99. Oh. 20. I hope Four. it's 39 so bad. 77. Oh, so close. Love you guys. <laughs>